Hello. Hello. Welcome to Jam and Jabber. This is Steph. This is Ken. And we have a very extra birthday special. It's super duper special because you know what? September 3rd, 2023, which is tomorrow because I'm dating this video now. It's Heathcliff's 50th birthday. It's his ding dang birthday. Mm -hmm. Oh, you've got a little bit of editing. Oh, I do? Yeah, see We're how it's a little off? It's not a full screen. Oh. Um, hang on. Yeah. Um, let me just... Ha ha ha! I was zoomed out funny because I made this earlier today and forgot to hit Command Zero, or Control Zero, rather. Perfect! Yes. Um, now no the birthday party can uh, really yeah. start. Now, now that we're, like, <laughs> synced up properly for yes. the screen. Uh, so, yeah, Heathcliff came out on September 3rd, 1973. Uh, fun fact for you, Garfield didn't come out until 1978. Heathcliff is the OG orange cat. In the comics. Mm -hmm. In the funny papers. In the funny papers. So we thought to celebrate Heathcliff's birthday and give us an excuse to just talk about the bonkers state that Heathcliff is in, which is amazing. Like, if you don't follow Heathcliff on social media, I recommend it. It is a wild ride, and I adore every moment of it. Um, but we're going to try to draw Heathcliff in other styles, in other kind of settings, um, different, like, maybe animes, different styles from uh, very well-known um, comic strips over the years as well, and we're going to have a blast doing it for you. For those who didn't catch that, uh, yes, Heathcliff is still going. Yes. It did not stop. No. Its 50th anniversary mm -hmm. is, like... It's still very much mm -hmm. like active, and yes, Heathcliff is on social oh, media. Yeah. yeah, Heathcliff is alive and well in yep. 2023. Yep, and it's fucking bonkers bananas. It's, there's so many great characters, like the uh, man-eating giant, uh, the garbage ape. Uh, everybody loves the garbage ape, quite frankly. Number one. Oh, we're, I was we're, just oh, telling oh, you oh, that gotcha. while you okay. were just talking, just so wow. that you could. S ease into that mm, whenever you would gotcha. finish your sentence. I was trying to be like <laughs> nice and sly about that. They're a little behind the curtains for y'all. But uh, yeah, we actually we learned a lot about Heathcliff because uh, the, the original creator was George Gately. Uh, George Gately Gallagher. Uh, his Jim brother... Hedgeman. Yes. Uh, his brother John Gallagher uh, also collaborated on the comic with him. And um, he actually had his nephew... Um, uh, Peter Gallagher, not not the actor with with the eyebrows, not not the one from While You Were Sleeping, uh, different Peter Gallagher. Um, he apprenticed under his uncles, uh, like ninety three to ninety eight, and he took over uh, Heathcliff in ninety eight, and has been doing the comic for the last twenty five years. And so half of half of Heathcliff's life has been ran by this mm -hmm. other person who's not the original creator no, and but his nephew. Oh, I have so many things to say. I I adore it, quite but frankly. I think we should get started. Okay, let's get started, and we can start talking okay. about Heathcliff. So we're gonna take a look at Heathcliff through the lens of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. What? We're starting this we're, before Chance is here. The, before. Or um, Will, quite frankly. He also requested a JoJo. Oh, should we wait? So You know what? Sure, sure. Let's wait. Let's, <laughs> let's re-roll that. We will come back to a JoJo. Oh, you know, actually, I misread it. Um, the die was not on number one. It was number five. Number five? Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's that's completely oh, reasonable. Oh, chance did arrive in oh, time. Yeah. Okay. Well, maybe... Um... Maybe we do uh, a, a JoJo's you know, then. Let's let's okay. because fate was kind to like the okay. divine timing that it, it is <laughs> when uh, you said it was Peter or who is who is also requesting. Oh, Will uh, Rabbit King. Will, that's right. Yeah. I don't no. know where the fuck I got Peter. From. Uh, Peter Gallagher is the oh. uh, artist and and writer behind Heathcliff right now. Well, shout out to Peter Gallagher if you're watching. Shout our stream, out, man. We you adore know. your comic. I yeah. follow you on Insta. I love. I, plus, I love the way he draws robots. His okay, okay. So let let's 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 fucking start talking about Heathcliff, okay? Because for half of Heathcliff's life, because um, he's he's fifty years mm -hmm, young, mm -hmm. this very very handsome uh, this, orange this kitty, spry young lad. Uh, half of it was run by the current artist Peter Gallagher. Yes, and um, my personal theory. 
because if you haven't seen what Heathcliff's been up to in the last 25 years, do yourself a favor, like Ken was saying, and oh, yeah. go and follow them. He's on Instagram, yeah. uh, Twitter, um, yeah. all the social medias, pretty much. I think he's got his own YouTube channel, but don't go there just yet. Finish watching our stream, then check out his YouTube. Unless you got multiple devices and you can multitask, you know? I mean, multitasking's hard. Um, Chance asks, uh, does this mean Heathcliff is a Gen X? 1973? Yeah, Heathcliff is Gen X. Oh, yeah. Right. Okay. Um, he, so, um, yes, the, um, uh, the, my, my personal theory is that his uncle, who, who was teaching him the ways of comic book, mm -hmm. like, making comics, has definitely shifted and changed a lot, especially in the last 25 years I'm since sure. Peter has taken it over. I, I'm sure they had different writing styles, for sure. Oh, we got Chan says, not me having you guys on my laptop at a book binding tutorial on my phone. <laughs> 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 no, lots of people like multitask with multiple devices. Yeah, I get True. it. I get it. Um, and so... Um, the the my personal theory is that um, you know like because well, Heathcliff first started um, on the, in the in the funny papers yep. in the, the the Saturday morning like not Saturday morning cartoon well he did as a Saturday morning cartoon for a while too the, yes he he did get his own cartoon which I actually did watch when I was a kid I watched a little bit of it I wasn't as aware of Heathcliff as a child as I was of Garfield and Friends like. I definitely watched that more, but I think it was just, it was an awareness thing, like I said. It was actually the opposite for me. I watched really? more Heathcliff than I did Garfield. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Uh, it was just the weird time that it was on, and sometimes mm. I got them uh, confused at yeah. first, and then I was like, oh no, Heathcliff actually talks. Yeah. And well, like, well, I mean, yes, yes, Garfield talks, but Garfield's kind of annoying. Heathcliff was cute. <laughs> Heathcliff was funny. Heathcliff is punk as fuck. Like, he's, he's hella gangster. Like, he he's... He's very, very sweet and like, but he's like, he he had kind of like a weird little accent that he talked in. He he definitely has that northeast accent, mm -hmm. which, I mean, the the creators like they, they they live in Jersey, so it makes sense that they'd want to have like a Jersey cat. But he's yeah, and and I like the little of the characters more. They also had more personality rather than just dumb dog and stereotypical girl who <laughs> kind of had weird slutty eyes. Looking at you, Garfield. Oh, there, no, mm, you know, in some of my research for this stream, I did find, um, there is a girl cat named Cleo, who I will just say right now is, is, is furry bait. Huh. Well, yeah. I mean, I, I'll have to look it up, because it's been a hot second since I watched the cartoon. But it originally yeah. started, of course, in, uh, newspaper, uh, comic sections, yep. like Garfield, and all those big classic comics. And back in the day, like, you didn't need to do too much. Honestly, those first artists, anytime I hear them, like, try to give advice to modern day people, I'm just like, you know what, dude? Fuck you. First of all, it's, I know you're a dude. Second of all, like, um, you were just lucky. It, you were the yeah. right place at the right fucking time. You know, you look at, like, early mm. art in lots of different areas. Um, and, and it's really is just, they just got, I, I have a, a whole, um, yeah. rant to say about that, but it sounds like you have something you want to add. Well, I, I, yeah, absolutely. I, a big thing to consider too, is just that the, the landscape has changed so drastically from people who could make a career out of doing one comic strip for five decades. Lay, like, it's well, I was gonna get into completely that. completely different though, so... I, don't know, I mean, yeah, their their advice is outdated, basically. It's just kind of what I'm trying to yes-and you with. Well, I mean, yeah, and that's exactly what I was trying to say, um, was that their advice is incredibly outdated. And it's because, too, they didn't really necessarily have... A, 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 okay, I'll just say it. They weren't necessarily great artists. They were just, like, consistent. They just yeah. showed up, and they were, like, some of the first people to apply. And because there wasn't of any other people who were doing that... Uh, yeah. the, the whole shopping pool of people to hire to do your, your, your cartoons and your comics was much smaller I mean, than it would be in 2023. I and so, like, you didn't necessarily have to be a great artist. You just had to, to, to apply. <laughs> I think a lot of it kind of 
it it varies um like artist to artist because i like sure some some artists weren't necessarily as good as others and that's kind of one thing we were talking about with like rob liefeld last week too like and i'm sure he's definitely improved over the the decades i mean it's hard to get worse at something you do every day quite frankly um oh you say that <laughs> i i say that but there are some people who mm-hmm. sure do give it the college try <laughs> um <laughs> but uh yeah you know like like and that, that's actually a really good point, though, too, to their, their merit, is that they were there. They never really left. They, they always showed up. Yeah. You know, and that's, that's definitely something that I will say in favor for a lot of artists, is just don't give up. We got John in the comments saying Cleo was Riff, uh, Rough Raff's girlfriend. Oh, okay. Yeah, and welcome, John. So Hello. glad you you're joining us. Thank you for for being here. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Chance says Steph with the hot takes. Yeah. Any thoughts? Well, last week last week just broke me. <laughs> last week just broke me. I'm back. I'm spicy. <laughs> Got my hot takes already. Well, no, I mean it's just um, my whole point coming back to Peter Gallagher is that my personal theory is that's just that is that his uncle who was training him, who's teaching him the ways, he was giving him outdated advice. And I'm sure that, like, there were some days where he didn't know what the hell to make a comic of, and he just like throw some words on the paper and just see what sticks. You're not going to... Because back then, they didn't yeah. really have, like... You couldn't have a comment section yeah. immediately, and you could see how many likes you got, or, like, immediately people giving you feedback or comments about it. No. Some people would have to mail a letter in if yeah. they felt compelled enough. Most people would just be like, eh, moving on with the, the rest of my life, yeah. and then forget about it. And so, like, 98 comes by, Peter takes it over, and... I'm sure there was plenty of times where he had no idea what the hell to do, so he just threw some shit out there. Fast forward 25 yeah. years later, and it is some of the most batshit insane shit you will see, and it <laughs> is delightful. He has I, hit a oh, yeah. weird, weird mo- niche, just this this perfect amount of just weird chaos and insanity. And, and also, I yeah. think the consistency, what you're saying, because he yeah. continues to show up and continues to make his Heathcliff comics, even though none of them make any goddamn sense anymore. You know, I think, and, and that's an important thing to kind of note as well, just that um, um, Peter Gallagher essentially had to do the same stuff that every other cartoonist has had to do over the last 25 years, and that's figure it out. Because it's not like anybody could have foreseen how the internet and web comics and everything oh, yeah. would have affected their careers. Absolutely. I mean, hell, I know like like looking at um um Gary Larson from The Far Side, like he was vehemently opposed to his work ever appearing online. Like he fought tooth and nail for it for a mm-hmm. long time to just stay off the internet, which quite frankly is is unfortunate because he like, how could he have known that the internet was going to be what it's become, you know? Yeah. He, he had a reasonable worry that his work would just be stolen online, which, I mean, to an extent, yeah, it has. But his stuff is so ubiquitous that, you know, like, like it's not... Like, like people are going to know, like, oh, somebody reposting this. It's obviously not Gary Larson, reposting it or, or anybody uh, other artists like if your stuff is that well known like you know that it, it, it that sh- some i don't know um what, what, what's what's a good uh, internet uh, edge lord name um lone wolf 666 lone wolf 666 isn't the the artist responsible for um for Heathcliff or for the far side or anything like that. Too. Do you like how I pulled that name just straight out of my that, ass with such confidence? That, I mean, the ass <laughs> is where edge lords come from. <laughs> I will say that. You know, two parents figure, uh, two, two, two people figure out, hey, you know what? We're going to get a little freaky deaky tonight, spice up the romance. They try something up in, in the back door, and then nine months later, they're edge lords born. That's that's how it works, you that's, know. That's exactly. Well, I think it said that in uh, New Fallopian tubes, uh, oh, sixteen twenty nine. Oh, New Fallopians. Oh, God. <laughs> um. So we got uh, John uh, correcting. Oh yeah, it was riff raff, not rough raff. Ruff, 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 ruff. 
Uh, John says, I thought that the comic newspaper artist still had to deal with an editor-in-chief to get approval. Yes and no, because... Yes, they would have to submit it. Did they actually look at it? No. I Did mean, they let just let things slide, just slap it on the newspaper like a, like quick? We gotta, we gotta, we're, we're like getting this going now. It's hot off the presses. I, I think it depended too a lot on like um, how well established you were as, yeah. as as a comic artist. Like Jim Davis probably had very little oversight himself. Um, George Gately probably had a little oversight. Um, though, from what I understand, he did go through a couple different syndications um, with, with his work. So, you know, it, it, I guess it really varied. I also got, um, yeah, that was, uh, before I get into Nick Johnson's comment, um, I was going to say that, um, yeah, it depended on how well you were. Because if you were well established, mm -hmm. you, they're not going to double check and make sure. They're like, okay, whatever, just throw it on my door on desk, throw it in the paper. They're not really reading it. You know, and especially like Heathcliff, a lot of his comics are just one single panel yeah. with some text at the bottom. Yeah. So it's not really like, you know, it's really, it, it, there's not a lot you can do with it, but it's also kind of hard to fuck it up too, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm gonna, oh man, what you've done here though, it's not, <laughs> no mistake, this is beautiful. This is, this is, this this is, is one... Jojo's amazing Jojo kitty mm -hmm. with a robot. This the is robot stand. stand. I like the eyes. That's very Thank much stand eyes. It's very Iraqi. I was going yeah, that. yeah, that's good. Because yeah. uh, uh, some Heathcliff lore is that he was a rough and tumble uh, street cat. He was. He's uh, born in the like, uh, what was it? A, the a train? wrong side of the tracks. Yeah. His, yeah. The parents uh, taken in by the law had to grow up quick and he grew up mean. But then he was Adopted by a loving family, the Nutmegs. The Nutmegs, yeah. The Nutmegs. That's a real name. It, it totally is a real name. <laughs> this is awesome. Totally coming back to his his origin. This is a good one for our first one, actually. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. there he is, coming off the streets. Heathcliff's Bizarre Adventures. Yes. Uh, number five is the next number whenever you are ready. Oh, hang on. I gotta add a couple. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, go, 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 go. Nice. Aw, <laughs> uh, yeah. What was the next one? Uh, number five. Number five. Chance loves this. Five, oh, God. Just so long as Chance loves it, we know we've done, we've done JoJo's good. Steph. Uh, yeah? Are you, are you picking all the anime ones? <laughs> Because number five is DBZ. Yay! <laughs> it's over 9,000! Over 9,000! He's just over. He's just 50, you know? He's, yeah. he's still a yeah. young man. He's still I mean, a young what man. is that in cat years? Might be over 9,000. It might be. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we got John who said, uh, so many people have tried to imitate Gary uh, Larson. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, humor yeah. and artistic style, but they just don't capture the same really panache. Um, and... Um, Wow, panache that he had. There we go. Sorry. Oh my! I'm looking at the this on my phone. And I made sure to check up, uh, all the comments, but there's this stupid heart that is just right in the corner, <laughs> and I can't read it sometimes. Like it's not enough in the the chat. Eh! No, 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 no. Oh my gosh. Oh no. Oh no. I'm Technical. like a real YouTuber. No, 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 no. Yeah. It said all uh, like action of like block this, report this. I'm like no! Oh, no. No, 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 no. Uh, <laughs> hence my freak out. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's a lot of people who definitely have tried yeah, to mimic oh yeah. the style, but in, and the reason why we know that they mimicked it is because there's, it, it's really, like, you can tell that it, it's, mm -hmm. it's a copycat mm -hmm. and not actually him. I know a lot of people were really bummed when he retired. Yeah. That they wanted it just to keep going because there was nothing like the far side. Oh yeah. Um, like even, what was it? The one that sucks now. Well, it's, like, it's always kind of sucked. Uh, what? But um, the guy who did it, um, the, the Office, not Dexter. Um, what? You know, it's the guy who is the, like, the basically, um, um, it's in the Office setting with, like, uh, um, kind of like... Oh, um, Dilbert? Dilbert! I never really thought of that as being, like, a, a, a far side clone. No, but, no, 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 yeah, no, no. Hear no. me out. Hear me out. I, I know I'm going on a journey. Hear uh, me out. Scott Adams is a garbage human being, quite frankly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, thank you, John. Uh, Scott Adams and Dilbert. Um, not a copycat. Um, oh, but then Cat Chance thought that was funny. Copycat. We're drawing cats. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, and then thank you, Chance. Everybody's got Dilbert before me. 
Um, yeah, he is a D bag, John. He is a straight yeah. up. But um, no, what I was saying, what my point was, is that there was nothing else like what Dilbert was doing. There was nothing oh, gotcha. like the Far gotcha. Side. There was nothing quite like it. And that's that's kind of what I mean by like they were the first ones to kind of do it and that's the mm. only reason why they got into these jobs because i find that a lot of these comic artists are struggling in 2023 because a lot of them are still alive and they're still trying to do their comics yeah like that's why we all know that scott adams is a is a d-hole um yeah. is just because um um now that he's on social media and you can actually see what he actually says and thinks um, oh, yeah. you, you're not just like you, the, the illusion that he's just this, like, you know, awesome comic artist. Um, no, he's a real person and he's got some awful opinions and, uh, awful stances on things. And so, um, with, um, uh, but a lot of like these, like, like a lot of these other artists, like you were saying, uh, with a far sky, uh, sorry, uh, farscape artist, uh, farscape Farside, wow. Farscape really went downhill when they got rid of Zan. I mean, I know yeah. she was allergic to the makeup, but God, I really loved Zan as a character. This is this is why I know Ken, because Zan is also <laughs> my favorite. Shout out to Zan. Heck um, yeah. no, the but like the the Farscape and those ones is that um. You know, like, he, again, he didn't want to be on the internet. He was like, I don't yeah. want to be a part of what you guys are doing because, again, how do you, how do you, how do you protect your art? How do you yeah. do this? Yeah. And so a lot of them didn't know how to navigate a digital world, and so they yeah. didn't want to participate. Yeah. But Heathcliff, like, oh, he's OG, owned it. oh yeah, OG Orange Cat, and he's owning the internet. Like, it's just the most bizarre like ken's drawing some oh, yeah. of the bizarre yeah. shit yeah if, again if you've never seen heathcliff please read it so like it's so delightful the the like again heathcliff is just still 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 50 years yeah. later it's like a single yeah. panel comic and it's just like a, a scene with some words but mm. like modern day heathcliff just has the most peculiar and it doesn't make sense. If you try to make sense of it, you will just be sitting there for a long time trying to wrap your head. It is just like, um, um, everyone loves the garbage ape. Yeah. And it's just this ape with two giant garbage cans and it's just hitting and everyone's cheering. And like... And, and just excited for the garbage ape. There's like a garbage ape cinematic universe, like, in world for this. There's so many instances yeah. of the garbage ape. There's the giant man-eating... Like, uh, yeah, the, 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 man the man-eating eat giant. Yeah, yeah the man-eating yeah. giant. And, like, no one... Sh you shouldn't invite the man-eating giant to your barbecue. <laughs> And it's just Heathcliff standing next to this giant guy, just a, just, just yeah. a giant oh, yeah. guy, and it's a barbecue, and people are just kind of staring. Not being scared, they're just mm -hmm. staring. It's oh, just... Some people run from the, the man-eating giant. And um, there's also, <laughs> like, the weird helmets. Like, oh, yeah. the, the Heathcliff will just be wearing a helmet that says hot dog on it. Why? I don't fucking We're know. Meat. Like, it's... There's so many meat helmets. There's so many meat helmets. There's so many just... And, 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 like, just the most bizarre shit. That's where we're like, if you have not seen Modern Day Heathcliff. But, again, he's, like, taking this advice I'm sure he got from his uncle of, like, you're not sure what to do. Just slap some words on the paper and just make a comic. And he does. And somehow he's managed to figure it out, like, the internet oh, yeah. in 2023. I mean, <laughs> and he's still going strong. Yeah, I, I, I definitely like your headcanon that that was the conversation that they had. Like just do what do what feels right just see what sticks and you know what with the internet being what it can you can get real-time feedback that you couldn't you know in the 70s and 80s yeah and it's it's fantastic like it, it can definitely be a hindrance at times like if you listen too much which i've always heard the advice like listen to your fans don't listen to your fan like listen to the community listen to them as a whole do not listen to a single person because they will always give you terrible advice i buy and block those people yeah. <laughs> yeah. no really i do and uh I'm, I'm doing pretty good as far as my followers are, are go on on instagram um because uh i also feel like those types of people who just leave really nasty, awful comments, and they're just trying to to poke the bear. They're trying to start a situation. They're trying to start something, 
And I don't feed into the trolls, and mm -hmm. I don't feed into that toxicity, and don't so I, trolls. yeah, I just block and delete them. I'm like, I love that Instagram has the feature where you can uh, block and delete and keep them from any future yeah. accounts. And of course, I'm sure it goes off of IP address, so they just have to have a different phone or device or something, whatever. I don't care. Um, I'll keep I'll keep blocking them because ever since ever since I just started doing that. It's made it on my community on my page a lot better and people feel safer commenting and they feel better uh, being on my page. Yeah. So I got, I'm going back to the, the chat uh, chances. I just looked up to see the monkey. <laughs> <laughs> John, uh, just glue some gears on it and call it steampunk. <laughs> That's so the fancy thing to do nowadays. That is another delightful song that the internet has produced. John says, just put the uh, garbage ape in it and call it Heathcliff. <laughs> pretty much. Yes, pretty, pretty much. much. It's it's so bonkers bananas, and it's so fucking charming. Because, again, I, I grew up watching the cartoon, and, again, I liked Heathcliff. I thought he was cute. I liked the characters. I thought he, he was a cute little orange cat. Um, and I liked him more than I liked Garfield. Um, I think it's um, like the the open eyes where he looks much more inviting while Garfield's got that half lidded like he's mm -hmm. kind of a, the kind of fuck me eyes. Uh, <laughs> I mean, we were talking about that girl cat who's got it more than uh, he does, but uh, more of like oh, it's just just kind of a grumpy kind of a grumpy boy. I and, just, and I had to say it. Thank you. And you're, I mean, of course, this is your stream. <laughs> oh my god! Oh. This is your audio mm. on the internet that exists. <laughs> It says that yes say where, that where i say garfield has come fuck me eyes. see there's a better there's a better clip right there yeah yeah, yeah. please don't take that out of context Ooh. i don't know what i would do oh no oh no <laughs> chance the millennial divide heathcliff and garf i do love a garf don't get me oh, yeah. wrong i do I, love a good garf i i especially love garfield minus garfield like that is so bonkers i love it oh Ugh. Yeah, John. So John says, I thought Heathcliff's uh, girlfriend and uh, baby kitten mama was Sonia. I think so. Yeah, that sounds right. It's, it's, she's so cute. Like, I, I really like the characters. And yeah, I think you're absolutely right, John. It's been a long time. I sh went to do some lore, um, like meant to go do my homework before tonight's <laughs> stream. And then I got distracted with a bunch of other stuff and it didn't happen. I mean, I'm sorry. Super valid. No worries. Yeah, it's you um being an adult and living your life. Yeah, I was trying to do like meal prepping for the week and being a responsible adult. Yeah, what's Ow, up with that, right? Oh my gosh, yeah. Um Yeah, but like I, I, I think Heathcliff is, is very sweet. Like, uh it was uh it was on the same block that I would watch Pound Puppies. Oh god, yeah. And so like after like the they were like, Oh, those icky poo puppies and they were like the cats were always seen as like the very villainous in pound puppies. It was like nice to watch Heathcliff and I'm like, Heathcliff is cute. Look at him. Screw you, pound puppies. <laughs> those puppies are they're they are icky poo puppies. But like for real, <laughs> dogs do kinda of smell. <laughs> I mean it's part of their charm. I I, I think it's very sweet. I, I've met so many awesome dogs. Yeah. Do some have dogs have a bad smell? Yes. Do some dogs have a lovely perfume? Sometimes. Excuse me. Um, but no, I, 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 I'm not uh, um, uh, a dog or a cat over dog person. I am a su sweet, adorable, cute animal person. Um, I would hug a jaguar if it would let me. Oh God, I, I don't, I don't know if I would be that brave personally. <laughs> I would definitely hug a bear. I mean... And give it tiny kisses on its very large head. <laughs> I would totally be that person. So I'm not like, oh, mm. icky poo puppies. But it's just because that comic, or that, that one cartoon was very yeah. much like that. So I remember watching, I, I always liked watching Heathcliff afterwards. I'm like, yeah, cats are great. Okay. I always wanted a cat when I was a little girl. And mm. I didn't get one until I was an adult. I'm 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 gonna I'm gonna call an audible here on on a couple things. I'm I'm gonna change the the Super Saiyan hair up. Or, I thought that Super Saiyan hair was good. This is this is amazing. I love that you did the garbage ape. As like the the transformation. Yeah. Um. He needs a helmet. Is what. Oh he needs. yeah, he needs the helmets. Yeah. He yeah. Needs... <coughs> Excuse me. Pardon me. Because his power level 
is over 9,000. <laughs> <laughs> I like that you had the plus sign to it. That is, yeah. very, that is very modern day uh, Heathcliff. Got, gotta keep it Heathcliff yeah, up in here. This is great. Gotta be a this, proper Heathcliff. This is art. This is amazing. <laughs> Uh, is number eight an anime? Am I, uh, am I still eight? hitting all the animes? No, number eight is um, number eight is not an anime. Number eight is another comic that we've actually hey. talked about. Number eight is Far Side. Hey, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna try doing a Heathcliff and a Far Side. Now we're gonna be the copycats. Yeah, meow exactly. meow. Meow meow, motherfucker. <laughs> I was thinking that too, John. Your last picture, Heathcliff did kind of look like he had boobies. I know you were trying okay. to go for like I, pectorals. Oh no, yeah, because like watch Dragon Ball Z. They are some big, muscly, boobied men. Okay, like yeah. legit. Those pecs look like boobs. I mean, what is a pectoral but a boob? Like, like a different boobs. shape of boobs. And there's lots of different shapes of boobs out there, and they're all beautiful. Goku has boobs. Okay. <laughs> I'm glad that you wrote it, so now it's for real. It's It exists yeah. in the world we're, now. We're trying to do something nice for our hard of hearing friends out there. <laughs> um, okay, so I, I, I am promised. I'm, I'm, so John says, I remember one comic that Gatley did way back in the day uh, had Grandpa Nutmeg uh, getting a call from Sonia's owner saying that Sonia had a litter and they all look like Heathcliff. Yeah. He overhears it and then he goes to the zoo and shakes hand slash wing of the stork of the zoo. <laughs> That's cute. That is That's cute. That's cute. Hell yeah, man tits! Yeah! Oh, that's very cute. Yeah, uh, that, that's a, like, you know, that kind of sense of humor. Like, mm -hmm. you know, with Heathcliff, I thought it was very funny. Um, uh, I'm trying to remember some, like, I like the art style, like, of Grandpa. He has a very round head, right? And then, like, the little spindly moustache. Yes. Yeah, it's very cute. I, I, I Again, I, I absolutely really enjoyed Heathcliff. But Heathcliff nowadays, oh, my God. And, I mean, the artist, it, art is very cute. I know I was giving crap about artists uh, not being very good back in the day. Because uh, some of them weren't. Uh, Kathy... Oh, oh you try to tell me Kathy is good art. I, I, I hate how squished the eyes are, but from everything I've heard, Kathy Guy Swite is just the most delightful person to talk to. Oh, yeah, I've heard that, too. Yeah, yeah. But the art is not good. And you do something <laughs> every single stylized. day, and you still, like... I mean, you know, some of that, I think, just comes down to the art of the possible, because you are having to do every single day, and it's like, it may not be your 100%, but it's whatever you can get out. You know, in time to to meet your deadline. You know. Yeah, uh, it's definitely a very very different world. So so Ken also uh, watches a really or listens to a really awesome podcast called Comic Lab. I adore that uh, podcast. Really recommend it. It's on all streaming platforms: Pandora, Apple Music, Spotify. Check them out. They're they're fucking fantastic. Uh, Comic Lab. Um, so I know that Ken's talked like he's got he's got a lot of information because they talk a lot about these types of things on Comic Lab. And uh, yeah, I mean, if you're a comic book, if you're interested in making comics, or just interested in like being more um, like a um, a self um, produced, self yeah. uh, made uh, um, just, content creator in yeah. general, um, ways to navigate social media from like a business perspective. They've got lots of recommendations and details. It's fantastic. Like how to run a Patreon or a Kickstarter. Yeah, Ken's so excited. He's just got to jump on in. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I was kind of, I was getting there. Just okay. wanting to yes and you and, and be part of the show. <laughs> We were saying before, like, how it's, like, hard to, to draw and talk at the same time. So I'm, like, here. Like, here, I'll talk so you can draw. But but you're, like, no, I want to talk about oh, these I want to talk, to. I want to be part of the show. Fun. Talk about the things <laughs> I love. Talk about all the things I love. Uh, yeah. The, um, um, so, yeah, Comic Lab. That's yeah. what I was saying. Comic Lab has talked a lot about just, like, how, um, like, and, and if, who, are, who are the two guys? Um, Brad Geiger and Dave Kellett. Which one made the documentary about comics? Dave Kellett is the um, uh, um, co-producer of Stripped, the comics documentary. Is that on Netflix? It might be. I don't recall. I thought I saw that on Netflix. I never saw it, but I, I saw it as, like, yeah. a suggested video um, a while ago. Um... And it is very fascinating to look at the that early history of comics. Um, I know that we were talking, uh, or we 
Well, Ken and I were talking about this because of something that he had heard from Comic Lab. And I've seen other people talk about this, and I, I wanted to watch another video. And I, I want to do a little more research about this topic. Um, just because um, it's something that's been coming up a lot of from different comic book artists are um, the, um, the differences between manga and how U.S. comics and why manga has done so much better. And yeah. it's interesting listening to how a lot of these uh, U.S. audience, like, you know, people from the U.S. say, oh, it's because of the stories, it's because of this, and it's because of that. And I'm like, somebody who's been buying manga since I was, you know, a, a early teen, since I was a young warthog mm -hmm. for many years, um, I'm like, it has to do with the publishers. That's the biggest difference in how they buy things in Japan versus how you buy things here. It is comes down to capitalism, but in a different kind of like direction where, you know, who they, who the target audience was, how they were shaping these things. And, and, and I say that because it's like you had two major kind of groups of comics and comic artists like, especially, like, in... We'll, we'll talk about the 70s, right? Mm -hmm. You had Marvel, DC, and then you had these ones in, in the newspaper. And that was pretty much it. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, well, I mean, it, it varied. You you did have other, um... Oh, gosh. There were other indie publishers at the time, too. Okay, but, but like, not indie, because... The big two were Marvel and DC. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, because indie, that's just kind of like making, breaking the rule. I mean, of course, you're always going to have indie publishers and indie artists and stuff. But, um, yeah, like, as far as, like, the big major publishers, it was newspapers and then Marvel and DC. And in Japan... In the 70s, and it still was not, it's not fully developed as it was, but like you got into like the 90s. Okay, let me, let, let me, let me put a, the, the, the two compared to the 90s, okay? Like even still in the 90s, like you still had like your comic, or uh, your comics showing up in the newspaper. You had Marvel, DC, um, 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 Black Horse, Dark Horse, Dark Horse, yeah. Uh, Image, and then they eventually got bought up I by. Don't know image started. Image might have been like eighty eight. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Nineties. Yeah, gotcha. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you had a couple more publishers, but it's still like they were all centered about uh, comic books. Like there are actually be comic books uh, superheroes, yeah. and so they were talking about like super guys and bat guys and spider guys and beetle guys, and maybe we'll throw in a lady every now and then for the male gaze, um, <laughs> so that he's not considered a, a, a gay dude because. What three men living in a giant mansion together? They, oh god, are you're I, I can't remember her name is Auntie something, but yes, like they did that to Batman. They killed Alfred for a time, but lo and behold, he was just on vacation actually, and uh, yeah, they they tried to bring in like a lady so that it wouldn't be just like three dudes engaging in in questionable behavior together. Ken, you are nailing this style. I was not sure if, how this was going to look. And this is absolutely that far side style. Like, great job. <laughs> Thank you. Great job. Ah, crap. Yeah, the... Um, Sorry. Um, Move there. Oh, dang it. So, but in J compared to Japan, yeah. you had so many more publishers. <laughs> Oh, I'm gonna pause this because this is this is great. <laughs> I'm so proud of this. <laughs> oh, John says we need a garbage ape in that scene. Oh god, okay, you, you got. Because <laughs> it is that's totally just their style. Like he'll just throw in a garbage ape just because. It's just the garbage ape. Oh man. Oh, there is a great um like. Yeah, like, I think the channel is called like Hot Dad. The dude did a song about the garbage ape, and it's it's beautiful. It's just like um, the garbage ape. Oh man, the garbage what ape. Hopes and dreams are made of the garbage yeah. ape. Yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty that, much that's it. That's the song. It's really good though. God, I, I for those of you who may not know Far Side, I'm referencing the Cow Tools comic that that he did. Oh, that's uh, right. They, oh my god. god. That comic <laughs> confused so... and infuriated so many people. So, like, 
Gary Larson got so much just confused hate mail written into his publishers off of Cow Tools because just nobody got it. And oh my god, it was so funny. Just that, again, that's how you made that comp- that's how you that's how you made comments back in the day. You know, right into their publisher, like, what the fuck does this even mean? I remember the Cow Tools. Oh, oh. yeah. Um, well, while you're drawing a garbage ape, uh, okay. I'll, I'll I'll finish my little story real quick. Well, I. I'll tell a little bit more part of it. I'll probably pause it and continue. Like, what the fuck was I saying? Um, the but but the biggest the difference in in like the '90s is the number of publishers and what they were publishing. Cause so in Japan um, and like where you were buying comics too. Because in the United in the United States in the '90s, again you had just a handful of publishers, and either there was newspapers. Or it was, like, superheroes. You had, like, a few, of course, indie people who were doing little things here and there. Um, you got uh, Sandman, which was, like, really starting. You were just starting to see new oh God, things. Yeah, with, like, Vertigo. Yeah, yeah. with Vertigo. Um, you were starting to see things start to come out of just the superhero era. But it was still very, very new. And it was, like, from only those that they trusted who were also writing comic books before that with superheroes. So, like, once you were, like, established, that's how Neil Gaiman was able to do it, Mm -hmm. is because he'd written a number of other, like, for comic books with superheroes before that. And they're like, all right, Neil, we'll let you have another one. Um, And so, but in in Japan, you had so many different publishers um, that, like, again, they were, some were, like, for... um, like, you had Kodanchi, who was, like, cutesy girl stuff. You had ones that were for, like, boys, um, like, Pokemon and uh, Digimon. You had um, action ones. You had horror ones. You had fashion ones. You had so many different little publishers. And, um, okay, this is, okay, I'll pause, I'll pause my story. It's great job. This is art. This is art. Oh, my God. Oh, goodness. Uh, number six. Next? Number six. Yeah, All right. our next oh. one, if you're when oh, you're ready. Steph, this may distract you from, from your story. Oh, no. Number six is Eggers. Yay! Eggers! Okay, I will distract my story because I made the suggestion. <laughs> Yay! Yeah, Who sort of. here remembers Eggers? Oh god, I do. I, I do. do. I wanted to right. submit my own egg. Oh, same. I totally wanted to submit my own yeah. egg. And like the egg puns, they were so bad that even my dad hated them. Oh, like they were they were the mostly egg excellent that that was like yeah. the, that was the probably the most clever they got with the egg puns but they did one every single week they did every single week john says i submitted so many things to eggers <gasps> did any of your things actually get in the newspaper uh this is a different one because obviously mm-hmm. uh this wasn't a particular artist um you you the uh, for those who have never heard of an eggers before and we are dating ourselves yeah we are uh, <laughs> shout out to eggers i was that was Heck so yeah. much fun it was just like what ken showed in that picture mm-hmm. like that's still first is that's what it was is that you had like an yeah. outline of an egg and that you were um, you were able to submit your own egg to the newspaper, and then if you were lucky, they would sub- like you know he would write some sort of egg pun to go with it, or you could submit your egg pun and then your little drawing with yeah. the egg. And it was just that's all it was. So there's no nobody like it was just something cute for like a lot of kids. Sometimes they'd make some that were funny, but some of them were just usually really bad. And but it was yeah. just so charming. It was just so stupid, like the eggers. But yeah, every like every single person I knew who always like who grew up with Eggers, everyone wanted to submit to Eggers. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Like you people talk about like making your own videos now, and like I wanted to be on TikTok. No, we had Eggers back in the day. God damn it, and we Eggers. we were happy. <laughs> oh, John said sadly no. I always waited with anticipation, but yeah. got disappointed every Sunday. Oh, I'm so sad. I'm so sorry. You know, I, I always wanted to, but I, I was just too shy. So I, I admire yeah. your bravery for submitting because I was too scared to. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. I, this I is always. This is already <laughs> off to a great start. <laughs> Egg Cliff. Egg Cliff. Uh, God, yeah, I always wanted to submit to this, but just I, I never figured my parents would be cool with like 
wasting an envelope on my kid art kind of thing. A so whole stamp on I, that? They weren't supportive of my art. Like, <laughs> oh, still goodness. aren't. Oh, that's very true. Not to make this into a therapy session for me. Um, God, this, is so this is so Sweet. good. This is so good. Oh, Eggers! Egg Cliff. Yes. Um, yeah, the, the, um, Eggers was just such a, I don't know how long they did it, but it felt like it, they did it forever. Yeah. Like, it, even when I was getting to be older, uh, in the 90s, I still remember Eggers and, and still, and then yeah. I was thinking as an adult, like, maybe now, maybe now I'll submit to Eggers. Maybe I'll just do some, like, anime on it <laughs> Eggers. <God>. Yeah, <laughs> just, just do, like, a very anime face. Which you've totally done on a stra uh, Kirby stream, which was pretty I, much God, like did. an Eggers. There, there was another thing I saw that somebody did, like, a blank Tom Nook face. Like, just his body with a blanked out face. And I totally did, like, a very Dio looking face for oh, it. Oh, it was very Bishi. Mm -hmm. Very oh, it was, I was going as Bishi as possible. Like, he even had, like, the little uh, twinkle in his eye. It was great. Oh, it was beautiful. It was. Um, yeah, the. Um, what should I say? What was it? Oh, yeah. So, I would, we would highly recommend checking out our Kirby stream because it's essentially that, like a Kirby shape with just different, like, yeah, pretty you know, much faces. That, that like, it's thing. like an Eggers, but with different uh, with fandoms Kirby. and IPs. It's really <laughs> funny. We had a really fun time uh, doing that Kirby stream. Yeah, we did. And um, um, love to, to, to do it again. Uh, we got uh, John saying two dollars in stamps went into my dreams. Uh, my failure to get on Eggers will live in egg for me. Uh... <laughs> Let's bring back Eggers. Oh my God, is yes. Eggers still alive? I I don't know. Is Eggers still alive? I mean, <gasps> maybe. I mean, if you put them in like a little bundle thing, I don't know. I'm trying to make a joke about like carrying it egg around for like your health class bit but oh yeah yeah, yeah. Egg cliff. <laughs> oh my god i wonder if egg eggers is still alive if it is i'm totally gonna submit oh my god yes like this has been my goal since i was like five years old <laughs> maybe maybe we'll we'll make my, our own eggers we'll yes you have know an what? egg stream if if you want to submit an eggers to us we would <gasps> gladly accept it quite yes. frankly yes to an egger stream yes egger oh, yeah. stream <laughs> Oh my gosh. Um, that was totally distracting from my whole like manga rants that I've been saying all week. Who are you drawing with them? I'm drawing a little robot. Oh, robot egg! A little robo egg because people love robots. Yeah, were the robots. Robots dig him. Robots weren't pre. Um, I don't think. I think the robots are definitely a, a Peter Gallagher invention yeah. for the comic. I think that that's a Pete. The Pete original, because I don't remember them being the the, the cartoon, because the cartoon was definitely like the OG Heathcliff, oh, yeah. while um, what Peter Gallagher is doing now is just I cannot stress how fucking crazy it is, but it's so it. beautiful it so and much. charming. Little Robo Egg. Oh my god, I love this. <laughs> oh, I need to roll a dice again. Uh, do we done number seven? Number seven. Oh god, no, we haven't. Can I just want to stay real quick? Yeah. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. you for doing acres. You're welcome. My my <laughs> little inner child is very happy. You in know, this, this was healing for me too to do an acres. You know, it's yeah. finally my acres got <gasps> seen by people. Oh, yeah, on the yeah. internet. Oh, Heck that's yes. exciting. That is, that is exciting. <laughs> we'll definitely take other people's acres if you yeah. want to submit oh, to yeah. us. Oh yeah. my gosh, yeah. yes. Yeah. Um, number seven, you said, yeah. is none other than Dick Tracy. Ooh. Let's, let's see if we can do a Heathcliff as a, as a Dick Tracy. Okay, so funny story. Um, yeah? The, so, um, I remember when mm. I got my first smartwatch. <laughs> nice. And I call it my Dick Tracy watch. Nice. I was like, am I, am I old enough? Can I, am, am I too much of a baby <laughs> to call this a Dick Tracy watch? I, I grew up with this. Am I, but I feel like I'm a little too young to say the call this a Dick Tracy watch. I mean, there was that Tommy Lee Jones Dick Tracy movie that I remember watching like snippets of when I was a kid, but I know, don't think I really ever understood it. Mm. Uh, but yeah, no, I'm pretty sure it was Tommy Lee Jones who was uh, Dick Tracy in the live action one. Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, that movie was it was cool in the moment, but then like watching it again as an adult, I'm like, oh. 
Yeah, it probably hasn't aged well. No, no, it hasn't. Oh no, John Eggers what? ended back in 2005. Oh, it had a damn good long run, it though. It did. Rip, Eggers. Rip. Rip. Thank you for looking that up, John. Well, I guess we're just going to have to bring it back. We're just going to bring back Eggers. We will. Yeah. Chan says, this is perfect. I just watched uh, Sunset Boulevard. <laughs> I don't know what Sunset Boulevard is. Um, I, I, I'm not sure either. I, oh. From, from the, the, uh, the gist of it, I'm going to assume it's some sort of like noir kind of whodunit show is mm. my guess. Ah, uh, yeah. Sorry. We're too old. We're old enough to remember Dick Tracy, but not old enough to know what Sunset Boulevard is. I'm sorry, Chance. I mean, we also haven't had cable in who knows how long. Yeah. No, I remember, like, my very first uh, Samsung smartwatch. I was so excited that I could, like, take phone calls on. I'm like, it's such my Dick Tracy watch! And then, like, all the old boomers that I worked with were like, how old are you? (laughs) I'm like, I learned how to type on a typewriter. They're like, no, you didn't. And I'm like, um... I write cursive. They're like, no, you don't. I'm just like, Jeez. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, sure, okay. I also know how to use one of those crank handle uh, calculators. I'm like, now nah, you're just making shit up. I'm like, Jesus Christ. How? How? Okay, okay. First and foremost, you know the crank handled um, uh, calculators. Like, like I know it exists. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, you aren't, like, bullshitting them. Like, just the fact that you know that. But just, oh, a young person knows our, our technology is the thing that makes them feel old. Like, no. Nah, there, there's 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 more to life, quite frankly. Ken, we're yeah. not old enough. Sunset Boulevard is a 1950s uh, film noir about a washed-up okay. silent film actress and a movie writer. We're not old enough. We're, clearly. Uh, um... As much as we're saying, we know the crank uh, cal- uh, calculators and typewriters. Mm-hmm. Not old enough to know 1950s films. Sorry, boomers. Yeah. Sorry. This is why we don't get to have houses. <laughs> this is the real gonna, reason. Yeah. Gonna yeah. make him a little larger. Sorry if uh, the transformation is janky on screen to watch. Ah! Wow. <laughs> so the THX. Oh, jeez. The audience is now deaf. Yeah, yeah, seriously. Um, my rant about mongers. (laughs) Gotta get back to it. No, the biggest thing is is that it's... Because the publishing companies, what they would do in Japan is, one, you would buy manga in bookstores. Um, and that was a big difference then in the United States. You didn't buy comic books in bookstores. You bought them at comic book shops or in newspaper stands. Yeah. That was the biggest difference. And so, like, you would get, let's see, a floppy, um, of a, like, a Superman and a co- in a newspaper stand, um, but you wouldn't necessarily see them at bookstores. However, manga was. And they would also, um, sell these very large, like, two or three or sometimes four inch like uh, the spine of um, essentially the floppies of that you'd have for uh, US manga or comics but in uh, like you'd have like maybe four or five or six different stories in one giant like comic book and uh, the the benefit of that was that it gave people an opportunity to try out new stories that they wouldn't necessarily read if you didn't see that uh, cover of that co- uh, that one comic book that was flashy enough. You already bought it, and it was a low enough price, and they would also throw in, like, little things, like, hey, to sell the image of our publisher. Like, if you're publishing, like, magical girl stuff, like uh, Sailor Moon or... Um, uh, card capture Sakura, or like uh, all the other ones that my brain's not thinking of right now, but like Kodanshi um, and uh, Nakayoshi, there was all these different publishers, and they would put all these cute little prizes and these giant things, and those were sold with the magazines still in the bookstores because that was the one central place that everyone would go to. So you'd had a lot more people who were actually seeing manga than you would then yeah. if you're just walking by a newspaper stand, you know, people who wouldn't necessarily get their newspaper or, you know, just did they would walk right past it, right? So they wouldn't they can't got their newspaper and then they left. They didn't see the, the, the comics that were sitting there. And yeah. so that it was being a huge difference, especially in the nineties. Like I my very first job was a comic book shop. Like, you didn't buy comics other places other than comic book shops. And that's why so many of them are struggling now to stay in business. Um, 
Yeah, a lot of it too, just the, the pandemic as well. This is long before the pandemic, they were struggling, Ooh. but I'm sure the pandemic didn't help either. Um, the, uh, but yeah, so, so because they had more than just three publishers, they had countless publishers and each of these pub uh, publishers were wanting to take different stories and they would pro uh, take lots of gambles on lots of different stories. And again, mangaka artists are so different than in the U S you have one artist who writes the story, does all the inking, does all the penciling. Um, they did the halftone dots. They didn't do color. Uh, they still, still, most of them don't do color yeah. because cost and time and efficiency. It takes that much more time to color everything in your comics on the U.S. than it does like for manga just because they're doing like halftone dots just to kind of speed up the process. And I remember and um, I would go to Owajimaya and Kinokuniya in, in Seattle and I would buy those halftone dots. They'd have giant sheets and Japan was the one that really streamlined that process to basically make them sticky <laughs> so yeah. that you could stick them onto your page and so you didn't even have to do like the dots. You didn't have to draw it yourself. I like that you put the watch on the tail. That's really Thank you. cute. Um, so because and 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 you know people talk about like well they told so many stories about how they're community driven like eh, not all of them are like that. You only see what's popular enough to come stateside. Yeah. The stuff that stays in Japan, they do all sorts of crazy wild shit that you would probably never see. And I loved I loved as a teen going uh, to Kinokuniya picking up those giant comics and like again cute cute, cute stuff with it too like little knickknacks yeah. and things yeah. uh, but then you could see so many other stories before and it was cool when they finally got popular enough I'm like i remember that ah! you know it was like it was the excitement because you were reading it long before anybody else was and it was it was really cool yeah. this this is a very cool cat well thank you like you like this is very cute. I love that you gave it a little watch. Those shoes, those shoesies. Excuse me. Yeah. Oh, well, like the, the PI hat, like yes. this, like the Got, uh, like the helmet, like the helmet. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. that's cute. The, that's God, the cute. The helmets do so much lifting in in Heathcliff's so comic. So weird. I was never he, the helmets in the cartoon <laughs> or anything. With it's a hundred percent Peter Gallagher. It's just oh, random yeah. shit that he threw on the wall. Oh, yeah, spaghetti. For sure. Are you ready to move on? Yeah, you let's to, do you it. knock this one out of the park. Yeah, let's do another. Uh, number 12. Number 12. Let's see. Okay. Number two. Oh, God. Number 12. Before you announce that one, can, yes. I, make, can I read this one real quick? Sure. Uh, John says, looks like uh, Gatley had a comic book uh, made in 91 called Heathcliff the Cat Detective. Oh my oh, god! Oh, I need to look that up. Oh my god! I need to look that. I need to find that now. Wow! That's outstanding. He's with the cat detective. You, you just honed in on something. I did clearly. Wow! I, heck yeah, George Gately, come on. Thanks, John. Thanks yeah. for that Heathcliff lore. All right. So, are you ready for another hard-boiled kind of kind of character for, yeah. for the old Heathcliff? Yeah. We're taking this detective. To Sin City. <laughs> oh, God. oh, I have stories oh, about Sin City. Oh no! Oh, this, 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 this is going to be an adventure. So, um, I, I'll, I'll, I'll come back to my manga story. Don't worry, don't worry, everybody. I will. But this is another funny story. So, um, in in high school, I was in IB art. And it was the very, we, my class was the very first time they tried to do IB art. Um, they didn't know what the hell they were doing. They had a general idea. What did and, IB stand for? Um, so you know how like AP? Oh, advanced um, placement and then. Yeah, I forget what IB stands for. Huh. Okay. Um, not IBS, but. Um, <laughs> One would hope. You might get IBS because uh, it's so stressful. I had a lot of friends who were in IB for everything. I was technically an IB Japanese because I did all four years. Um, but so it's basically high uh, uh, advanced placement for um, uh, the school that I went to. We did the IB program and you did extra testing and stuff um, that supposedly goes towards college credits. It never did. Um, but people spent a lot of fucking money. You had to you had to pay money to do these stupid tests oh, to potentially have them apply towards college credits. And guess what they didn't do? They didn't apply it towards college. Oh, thank you, John. International Bachelor Bachelorette. Bachelorette. 
Wow. What? I obviously uh, um, can read Mercury Gatorade. Uh, Bachelorette? Bachelorette. Yes, that sounds right. Thank you. I'm sorry, John. I'm gonna I'm gonna blame Mercury Gatorade, and I'm a terrible reader. Um, the um, oh, and John, uh, so many chances. I keep forgetting those movies are based on comics. Uh, so I was in IB uh, um, um, art, and it was the very first time they did this program. And my art teacher, I hope you're listening because um, she's a straight up cunt. She Jeez. was there. Were, I have no kind words for this woman. She was so mean and so cruel. She killed my love for art, oh, she, especially drawing. I used to draw anime. I used to draw all sorts of my own original characters. I love. I was always doodling. I was drawing like Sailor Moon. I was drawing all sorts of things in like the the corners of my my assignments and stuff. And this woman killed it. <laughs> absolutely killed it for me yeah. um and uh it was in this IB art class and this comes to frank miller i promise um because um i was working at a comic book shop and so i had all this art and so the the what we were supposed to do is we had these um we were supposed to buy like a uh, uh, like a whole notebook like this whole oh, giant yeah. book um, and and we're, by the end of the quarter, we were supposed to fill the whole entire thing full of our original art, um, research things, whatever. And by the end, we we're supposed to have this entire book full of shit. And, I mean... That sounds like it's really great for the creative process. Oh, it was awful. It was awful, awful. Because we were supposed to do... Well, because she's like, oh, well, you're all like um, supposed to be doing independent research. Which is just basically fuck off and leave the teacher alone. Yeah, yeah. Teacher needs to, like, nurse this hangover today. Yeah, and... Oh, yeah, that's what that says. Yeah, and so she would do a couple of assignments that we were supposed to do. Because in addition to filling this book, we were also supposed to do big projects for the class as well. Mm -hmm. And, like, I was in IB Japanese. I had all these other classes I was doing. I'm like, I don't have time to fucking do all of this shit. And so, um, um, we were supposed to set a theme for what our intention was for the book of what it was we wanted to accomplish in our independent research. I want to dive more into classical art, classical painting, uh, figure for, um, like drawing, like figure sketching, whatever it is. And I was like, well, I'm into comic book art. I want to, I want to do like manga and stuff. Yeah. And she hated it. She oh, yeah. hated it. She hated it so much. And she tried everything to get me to do something, anything else. And I was like, no, this is what I want to do. And, um, um, she was so just again just mm -hmm. horribly cruel she intentionally even though in this independent research what we're supposed to do is just explore we're just supposed to have fun we're just yeah. supposed to oh, yeah. you're not like but she every week you had to give the uh, the book to her and then she would grade it it been basically if you did everything and she would always give me straight zeros on all categories like you were supposed to get fish. like 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 points out of 50 I would get zero out of 50. I would maybe get 10 out of 50 on a weekly basis. And it just killed my spirit of just loving art. And getting back to Sin City is that what happened for me, and it happens to a lot of other artists, is because I, what I really needed is I needed help learning how to draw figures. I wanted to do IB art because I thought we were going to learn advanced art. Oh, I yeah. thought she was actually going to teach us shit. Because yeah. any other art class I had taken, it's just like, do some pottery, draw thing. Yeah. And they're not actually yeah. teaching the fundamentals of how to oh, draw God, no. and figures, like the like a figure and such. Like, this is these are the shapes and things. I learned more out of my how to draw manga books yeah. than I ever did in yeah. any yeah. of those art classes. Christopher Hart has done a service to millennial artists <laughs> that no art class teacher ever gave us. Like, yeah. I had a teacher in college who was similar, who, like, gave me a lot of grief because um, my portfolio pieces that I was submitting were sequential art. 
and she did not like it but it's like she was very much like a modern art kind of enthusiast and it's like i don't care if you paint this green goblin looking thingy like that's got like fucking high heels and makeup and is some sort of edgy statement that you think you just made up like that's not the art that i'm passionate about lady like oh, Kenner, are you talking about she hulk <laughs> no th- this was a weird like et looking kind of goblin oh, okay. goblin i'm play. sorry i, I could like, resist <laughs> it, it just ugh. It, like, like plus this lady did like like um barbie mobiles like barbie part mobiles and so just edgy so edgy like ooh, you took apart barbie dolls you know what my sister did that to uh t- torment my other sister as a child like you're not that artistic and edgy lady you're fucking childish quite frankly yeah so so uh, and, and again coming back to sin city yeah. I, I promise it's the whole whole reason why i'm talking and sharing all these details is uh, I ended up doing is what a lot of artists who are struggling do is I leaned into a style. Yep. And so, uh, again, I was working at a comic book shop and I, like, I was reading Sin City. I was reading a lot of, like, Frank Miller's stuff. And I really, like, at the time I thought it was super cool because it was just that very bold, black and white, very yeah. angular, very, like, stylized. And I was like, I could do that. I could do that. And so I tried really fucking hard to emulate that uh, Frank Miller style. And she gave me even worse criticism talking about how i don't even understand how the human face works Jeez, what a have bitch. i ever even looked in a mirror she left those comments wow. in tiny baby stephanie's little book what a bitch oh she was awful she was so so awful and i remember so those are things i think about when i think of sin city yeah, yeah. and then i remember when it came out into theaters i'm like i wonder if that bitch even remembers I wonder if she remembers. Look, bitch. Look what got put onto the fucking big screen. Look what yeah. your fucking yeah. art is. <laughs> it's Seriously. yeah, yeah. I, I do have a, a love for Sin City. I just love the noir. I love like just how oh, yeah. ridiculous all the fucking like crosses and like he he, he has a love mm-hmm. of swastikas, but it's like weird. Again, Frank Miller was just a weird guy. Frank Miller is weird. Just a weird like, guy. God, yeah, just like putting Sam Jackson in like. A, a Nazi outfit, like him and Scarlett Johansson in the spirit. The spirit was weird. Let oh, the spirit was worse. That. Oh yeah. Oh god. Yeah, the spirit was bad. Sin City too was dumb, but like <laughs> I remember, yeah. Sin City came out like right after Lord of the Rings. It was the next big movie Elijah Wood was in, yep, 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 and yep. so like it was coming right out of my high school, coming into college, and I wanted, I wanted so bad to bring my fucking notebook and slam it on her fucking desk and say, hmm. Look what got into a fucking made into a fucking movie, you fucking cunts. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I, uh, rebellious Stephanie tried to make some more journals, and I tried to keep that like going because I wanted to prove to myself that I could still do it. Mm-hmm. But at, at that point, it, like a lot of that art was dead in me, and it was yeah. it's. I have struggled with my my own art, and now having as many followers as I do on Instagram for my binder and art is still strange to me. Yeah, yeah. It's still very very weird because I have struggled like even calling myself an artist because of that yeah. trauma from that teacher. Uh, Ken has been a huge help and support in helping me get back into that healthy space of like, yes, I I know I am an artist and yes, what I do is valid and and yes, I can do more things than what I am doing. But yeah, it's, it's been a whole fucking journey coming back. Uh, because, and I think of that with Sin City, because again, I did, I finally sat down, I fucking, I legit bought Sin City floppies and I cut pictures out, slapped them in and she's like, if this was lazy, this was lazy. I'm like, you showed me examples that people did the same exact thing. I remember sitting down with her and telling her that I'm like, look at this example. Why is this different than this? And she would say nothing. She'd just sit down and just stare at me. She's like. Uh, you're not going. I'm not going to change your grade. <laughs> I'm not going to wow. change your grade. What an awful and I'm like, I'm just being. trying to. Will you just help me understand what I need to give you? She's like, I've already told you. And then she'd always like, look at this person. Look at this person. They're doing great. Like, I don't know what your problem is. And it's always people doing classical art because she loved this one girl because she did paintings. And she just got chosen by her to be the favorites. And it's just like, 
Ugh, there's things I could say, and maybe some more fun stories. But I, I love. Um, so, so, so tell me more about this Heathcliff. <laughs> well, this Heathcliff, um, I'm, I'm trying to just like, just make way too many lines because that's really what I see when I think of uh, Sin City. It's just too many lines. It's like half um, the face is like shadowed, yeah, and you've oh, got yeah. like the yeah, yeah, grizzled yeah. look. Yeah. Marv um, was always like that. Yeah. No good without my medicine. <laughs> His medicine. Yes. You think of Julia from um, uh, Sin City or uh, Drawfy? From Drawfy, she she also she does that that very early, stylized early in Drawfy. Yeah, she did a lot of like noir, like heavy shadows and, and stuff. Like she's definitely walked away from that a little bit more. Oh, good. Um, but uh, yeah, she's. She, she is a phenomenal artist. She really s- nails that noir style when she wow. throws that out there. Because when I saw her doing that, I'm like, oh, honey, I made that mistake, too, because I didn't feel very confident as an artist. So I, lo- I leaned into a style. I leaned into trying to do, like, the angles. And so I wasn't following anatomy. Um, one of the person who did um, the the kindly ones um, from um, Sandman, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that artist also very incredible, but also had a very stylized style as well, um, which wasn't like you know anatomically correct. And I really loved that because it kind of gave me permission. I mean, truly, what what Baby Stephanie should have done is seen like how they were breaking the mold, which is what they were doing, yeah. rather than like oh, it means I don't have to be good at art; I just have to have a style. But a lot of people fall into to that that's um misunderstanding unfortunately oh yeah oh my god chance uh did the the chat the chat uh we got chance <laughs> saying the anti-anime art teacher is a, such a bonding thing yeah i know uh, that there's a lot of those artists out there a lot of those teachers out there and guess what bitch <laughs> look where we are now and <laughs> look where you are yeah for sure john i'm sure someone crushed her dreams which we should take joy in uh, I'm sure she I, I have no idea what the hell she's up to or anything like that but I'm like super curious just because um, like sh- for how much she tried to fight the anime style and comic books look at what's been so fucking oh, God, popular yeah. yeah seriously like you know I know people talk about comic book hero fatigue but you know for like how many goddamn years was it like the most gross yeah. and, and not just for money sakes but like what was popular what people were consuming yeah. guess what bitch guess what no one's coming to your fucking art gallery cause your shit sucks <laughs> Oh, I love a this. ham to kill for. A ham to kill for. Oh, that's cute. That's Thank very you. yeah. I got the the rain yeah. shadows. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Uh, have we done number three? Whatever you're number ready. Number three. Um, God, oh, I'm just so happy with this. I I just want to keep adding more lines to make it that's just what, look more like that. That's what Chan says. I was literally just thinking you just got a Juliet. <laughs> yeah, just just add more lines. Fill fill the whole entire screen black. Everyone's like ah, because you didn't fill in your lines. Oh god, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh man, okay, okay. You know what? I th- I think we can move on. Okay. Um, God, I am so happy with this. This is so good. I have to kill for this. Is lovely. <laughs> Number three. Have we done Steph, it? No, we haven't. Oh, okay. And you're gonna be so happy. Oh yeah. It's Doonesbury. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is also my suggestion. God. Those noses. The Doonesbury noses are so wild to me. The noses. I actually, yeah. when I was a kid, I actually really liked the Doonesbury art style. Yeah, Not because yeah, it was so stylized, but I really liked how simplified, yeah. with a few little brush strokes, so you could tell. He, he, he illustrated a lot with mm-hmm. little, like, mm-hmm. especially the hair. Oh, the yeah. hair usually wasn't all the way drawn in. Like, this is a great colored version. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I haven't seen too much Doonesbury in color. Because, yeah, like, same. so much of it, what the line wasn't even finished. Like, a lot of the line work was just like, poof, 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 poof. And, yeah. like, I know he was trying to go fast because he had to make so many comics by the end of the day and had to do the X, Y, and Z. But, um, um, but the Doonesbury style, I remember thinking, like, oh, it's so cool. I don't get any of these things what they're talking about. Oh man, they're smoking cigarettes. What? I know, so edgy. I saw this meme the other day. This is kind of more for for us elder millennials and Gen mm-hmm. Xers, mm-hmm. but it was like, man, I'm old enough to say that like we were uh, a cl- a class project in grade school was to make an ashtray out of like ceramics and that was considered a nice gift <laughs> like i'm that old <laughs> yeah yeah for sure yeah 
Like, my parents didn't smoke, um, because my, uh, my Oma and Opa had smoked, and, uh, my mom hated it. She, she's like, you might as well stick your head in, in a, uh, in a fireplace and, and, and sm uh, smell that and get, breathe that into your lungs. Oh, my Oma and Opa smoked like chimneys. I'm oh, sorry, my grandparents, um, my other German, um, yeah, grandma and grandpa. Although it's not just Germany where they say Oma and Opa, a lot of other European countries do too. But, uh, yeah, my, her parents, they, they smoked like chimneys. Um, lived, lived very long lives. Uh, mm -hmm. My Opa just recently passed at 98, like yeah. lived a very long yeah, life yeah. with gout, heart disease, high blood pressure, all the things. Um, yeah, must be all the, the, um, uh, sauerkraut that he ate. He was trying to pickle himself on the way inside out. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, the nose. <laughs> yes. <laughs> gotta, uh, gotta do it. Wasn't there like weird carrot characters in Doonesbury? I never read Doonesbury. I admit. Really? Oh yeah. I thought, because I mean, it was just in the paper. And so like once, um, like... Like once my dad would open up and he was like, "Oh, I gotta read, the, I gotta read the news, I gotta read the things," like you know, his generation did, um, and of course not anymore. But because they've got twenty tabs open on his laptop while he's working in the garage and listening to the game yeah. and also watching the game and also watching Fox News, um, all at the same time. But um, Jeez. yeah, and you wonder if he's got ADHD or not. <laughs> But I believe I believe he had like a carrot or like something um, as one of the char a reoccurring characters. I remember it just being very strange and bizarre. Uh, but once my dad was like done with like the main parts, then he he would let us like he'd let us have the the, the comics and like my mom always liked doing the crosswords. Those what she would always do. Yeah. Um, she didn't do the word scrambles. I tried them for a few times, but I was really bad at it. Uh, still to this day, I'm a really bad speller. Um, um, if English was not my first language, I probably would never be able to speak it. Yeah. It's uh, I struggle with it even as a as is my first language. But um, the um, yeah, we, it was uh, it was we, we we would always wait to, and read the 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 the, the funnies, read the funny yeah. papers. <laughs> Seeing the funny papers. The um um, I'm trying to remember now, because my older sister is much much older than me. I don't know if my younger sister was really into it as much. It was kind of something that I would I would like as soon as he was done mm. and it was like off the side. Then I would I would read through them. It was also very like political and like topical for the the day. Like they they had like um all sorts of like modern events and it just. That, that kind of thing, like, you can definitely stay topical, but it becomes a mu so much of a time capsule. And, like, nobody's going to go back and reread it. Like, nobody's necessarily going to want to reread a collection of Doonesbury comics because, like, I don't care about Mondale losing the election in 80, you know? <laughs> like, that, that doesn't matter to me at this point. Um, and it just, yeah, like... How do you stay relevant with that? Is Doonesbury still alive? I are I, they still doing Doonesbury? I don't know. I know I've seen like the the artist who who did Doonesbury. I know he's still alive, and like I've seen caricatures he's done of like Trump. Um, wow, I'm yeah. curious to see that actually. Yeah, I'll have to look so. that up because I'm I, again. I, I always liked the Doonesbury style. It was just seemed very just like so cool. Again, I had no idea what they were talking about. I oh, yeah. would just, I would try to read it, and I'm just like, I don't, I don't get it. Um, I don't want to talk about so many of the other ones I would read in the set of funny papers. No. Uh, just because there's some of them are on this list. <laughs> but there's one, couple. oh, I really hope we do. Um, but yeah. yeah. Um, this is, this is weird. I mean, you're doing a great job, but the two of them, just the styles are so bizarre. Yeah. yeah. You're, I mean, you're doing it. You're <laughs> nailing it. Like, you're doing a really fucking great job, but this is just so bizarre. Thank you. Um, going back to uh, uh, yeah. my, my manga rant. I, oh, I, I, no, like, again, the biggest difference is, and, and again, I keep hearing, like, people from Comic Lab, and there's another one, Comic Drake. Uh, shout out to Comic Drake. Uh, I wanted to watch his video. Um, so I don't know what his opinions are, but I think the biggest yeah, difference is, yeah, the biggest difference um, is just publishers because, yeah. again, 
what came stateside um, it was only reason because they were able to is because they were popular enough in Japan. They didn't, uh, when, when, uh, American companies were bringing things over, they didn't want to bring things that were flops in Japan. Yeah. Um, they, so they, there was the, the big heavy hitters that were doing really well in Japan that they would bring it over to the United States. And, um... I mean, of course, there's always going to be a couple of, of, of exceptions to that, but, um, like, I remember, I've, I've said the story on stream, too, is um, that um, when I was a young warthog, um, U.S. mangas were very expensive, um, yeah. like, at 20, 25 bucks a pop. In that, like, early 2000s, man, that was fucking expensive. Like, 90s and early 2000s, like, that was fucking expensive. It's kind of, like, more like paying 40 to $50 for a manga nowadays, roughly speaking. Yeah. Um, and so, um, I would go to Kinokuniya, the this Japanese bookstore in downtown Seattle, and they'd have Sailor Moon mangas for five bucks. Yeah. I was like, what? And it's the original, like, actual publication of it? fuck yeah, I'm gonna buy this instead. Holy shit. And um, I was studying Japanese at the time, and so I was like, it's for school. <laughs> Reading my, my Sailor Moon mangas. <laughs> and that's where I first learned about those big, chonky um, uh, publishing, like, what they were, like, because a lot of things were just imported straight from Japan. And, like, was hot on like the shelves yeah. there was coming to the u.s within like weeks um from or, like days sometimes days from when yeah. it was coming in out in japan and so um that was being in the pacific northwest probably didn't hurt either for oh yeah. yeah yeah there would be very large uh japanese population here in the pacific northwest um so we got uh actually john saying doomsbury is still going on <gasps> okay oh my god it's still alive um, it's just slow down. Oh, I'm they sure. They also took more than one hiatus. Oh, I'm good. I I'm glad they did. It's good to take breaks. Yeah, for it's good sure. to take breaks. Uh, Chan says, I remember the $20 mangas. Dad bought them uh, for me on occasion as a treat. So I have unfinished series. Yeah, they were expensive. They were very expensive. Um, and like, that is nice quality. Um, they, the, the spine on them would always crack. Um, just because they yeah. were made very poorly and very cheaply, but they were still very expensive. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, the Japanese ones were so nice. <laughs> I still have a lot of my OG Sailor Moon um, mangas that I bought from Kinokuniya. And then I think I said it too that like this uh, for my birthday, I managed to find some OG uh, Amigane sama, um, Oh My Goddess uh, mangas from uh, like they still had their Kino Kuniya stickers on the back. I'm like, ah, this is almost as nice. old as me. <laughs> Feel like Gandalf. Oh, it's almost as oh no, it's Bilbo. It's almost as old as I am. <laughs> we'll get it from the cellar. <laughs> nice. But um, God, this is Dunesbury style. This is yeah. They're smoking <laughs> the ashtray. Paper, yeah. A cup of oh, it's so Dunesbury, but it's yeah. yeah. <laughs> Great job. Thank you. Great job. <laughs> Lots of open, unfinished lines. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> oh my god. Oh, Dunesbury. I I had a sorry soft spot for Dunesbury. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, we did do number one. Have we done number eleven? Number eleven. No, we haven't. Okay. I think I think you're really gonna enjoy number <gasps> eleven. Number 11 is Haggai the Horrible! Yay! This yeah. is also my suggestion. Oh, yeah. I was like, the feet! The oh, feet! Yeah. <laughs> Very iconic little feetsies. Oh, for sure. And those eyes, the Hagar the Horrible. Mm -hmm. I read the shit out of this one. Oh, I, same. I loved Hagar the Horrible. Oh, yeah. It was, it was very kid-friendly. It was mm -hmm. fun for adults, mm -hmm. too. You know, yeah. I love that he had an undershirt, too. You know, he's being, like... Not too risque with his undershirt over <laughs> his loincloth. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> uh, Chan says, "Oh my god, that makes me so nostalgic for uh, um, Hagar the Horrible! Yay, Hagar! Yeah, I I, I loved watch or loved reading that one. Um, some of them made no goddamn sense, but also I loved the art style too. Mm -hmm. Like some of the side characters." Um, I know at the beginning of the stream, and I've said this a few times, that some comic book, like, the, from the, sun, the Sunday papers were not that good. Again, I'm looking at you, Kathy. Um, Jeez. I just hate it. I ah! hate Kathy. Yeah, hated just that, that Kathy. screaming. Oh, it's just like, another case of the Monday. That was Garfield. Okay, they were all had something Garfield spicy was to like say a case Mondays. of the Mondays. Like, Same Kathy Guy Swipe was... 
Kathy was always about like, oh no, I put on another five pounds. No more oh, chocolate yeah. bars. Oh, I'm oh, gonna yeah. eat a chocolate bar. Yeah, like, that was yeah. her. That was her. That, 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 was, that was her gist. What was the old lady one? I mean, there were a couple. Um, are you thinking Mother Goose and Grimm? No. Okay. Um. There. There's like another one. Like yeah, it was an old lady that was like trying to do like a far side style almost. But, like they had the curlers in her yeah. hair, and she was like always um, crabby and sassy about yeah, things. Yeah, I can't remember. Like her I name. do that, but I'm old. Is pretty much the punchline. Yeah, yeah. Like that. That. So I remember what comic you're talking about, but I don't I remember the remember. name. There was a few other like, but most of them were down to like. I would step on my uh, scale, but I can't see it past my sagging breasts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but without saying it like that, of course, because you know you, you mean... had to keep it keep it friendly for the PG for the kids. Um, John says, "Wasn't that old lady used by Hallmark?" Yes. Yeah, that's she totally right. got bought up by Hallmark. Yeah, because then she didn't make in the comics for too long. Because she she became like a very boomer meme kind of oh, yeah. kind of comic strip for a while until like Minions became a thing. <laughs> Oh, I just gotta look at your little hangar, Keithlip. This is adorable. Yay! That's exactly how they would draw their feet. Like when they're walking, mm-hmm. it was one foot up always like that. It was always like that. <laughs> Never an exception. Uh, uh, chance. Are Steph and I the same brave way uh, brainwave? Um, this time, I was just thinking about Kathy. Oh, Kathy was just so bad. Yeah, you're right. Like, oh no! And then she threw her head back. Ah! Yeah, the ACK. Uh, yeah. A-C-K. Yeah. Act. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, my God. Nostalgia. Yeah, I can't remember the name of that granny lady, but, like, there was a few other ones like that with, like, girls complaining about being bad, because that's what girls talk about. Dudes never talks about politics, but we just talk about boobies and... Heathgar the Horrible! Yes, yes. Heathgar! Yes, thank you, John. Heathgar the Horrible. This is so cute. This is so adorable. Um, but yeah, manga. I will finish the story eventually. Um, <laughs> the other things I want to say was like, you know, like, from those who don't necessarily look at Japan and its own history with, like, manga and comics... Um, they would make those assumptions about like, oh, it must be the stories. It must be this. No, it's because they have a lot more publishers and they, and artists have so much more control. Again, a manga car artist, um, writes, draws, inks, does everything for their own comic. They don't have like 20 different people all working, writing it and making sure the consistency and the timelines and multiverses. It's just them, you know? And, and, um, still to this day, a lot of, uh, uh, people still really prefer reading manga by, in paper. You still can go to a lot of bookstores and buy manga. Yeah. yeah, they do have anime stores and they do have, like, stores where you can buy, like, trades of, um, doujinshi, the fan-made ones. Mm-hmm. There's a whole market for doujinshi, which we can talk about for another day. That's, and then some of it's, like, porn, some of it's, oh, like, not... Um, just the, there's a whole market and people follow, follow specific artists just for their doujinshi and cause they get small publications cause they're able to God, use the right. same printing places right. as these big publishers. And so like you have just small groups of people who would work in teams like Clamp, um, which was a bunch of ladies. You didn't have a, if, 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 if Clamp tried to do what they did in the United States, you had a group of, of like a few women who were writing stories for young girls psh, they would have been laughed the fa- their faces like they would have been totally like kicked out of marvel studios like get the fuck out of here what the fuck do you think you're doing we we do superheroes like even like when um like in the 90s when th- things were starting to open up with dark horse and image and um uh vertigo and stuff with other publishers that eventually got out bought out by them um they you still you it's something that happened like with clamp again just these three women mm. writing and creating oh this is so adorable sorry i just got a good look um 
that uh, it, it would never have happened in the United States because of sexism. Um, they were like, no, you can't. Um, we, we only make comic books for young boys. And they wonder why they still have a problem with sexism and toxic fans among comic book nerds. Yeah. Um, you don't have a lot of that stuff in Japan because there's so much more available and they had so many more people who were doing them and they gave them much more of a platform so they could publish. Instead of like having just to result to indie, uh, indie publishers, like you were saying in the beginning, Ken, um, mm-hmm. like... It, you couldn't get published with fucking Marvel? No way. So you'd have to go through an indie, and no one would read your fucking comic, and you would just be disappear. Very few indie comics actually made head or like made like uh, enough attention. Like you had Johnny the Homicidal Maniac. Oh geez. In the nineties. Yeah, yeah. That was an indie, uh, and then yep. um, that caught enough attention, and then that publisher got some more business, but. <sighs> Yeah. Oh my god, yeah, the two birds. <laughs> the two birds. The two birds making sassy comments. <laughs> What's their sassy comment? Let's see. Um, we, let, let's see. Um, uh, how about... Let's see. The, the, Why does it have to be a hammer? Just because, what? again, it's just random stuff. It makes no sense. I, or why isn't it a sh- hammer? Where is this hammer? I, oh, sorry. My, my brain just fizzed out. Like, I had something in the I'm back sorry. of my brain, and then you pitched something that was pretty good, and it's like, where was I going on the other thing? Oh, no, I'm sorry. Just blanked I'm sorry. out. Um, um, how about the things he does for a scratching post? Yeah, <laughs> nice. Nice. Love it. The two sassy birds. This is... This could be a Heathcliff comic. Yeah. This could be a Heathcliff comic. Just with the two random birds in yeah. the back. Oh, sure. Yeah. It sure could. Like, the, yeah. this This is the Hagar-Heathcliff crossover that needs to happen. The one little tooth, because they always would do that. And Heathcliff and, and, and uh, Hagar, the hell horrible. Well, ah. Heathcliff as well. Yeah. 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 Oh, I yeah. love it. Have we done number... <laughs> I, I, I just, this is my favorite one you've done so far. This is my favorite Fantastic. one. Fantastic. Uh, number 10. Have we done that one? Number 10. No, we haven't. Okay. Oh, oh, I'm really excited to do number 10. Okay, okay. okay. It's Calvin and Hobbes. Ah! <laughs> I'm excited for you to see it, to see how you do it. I, I have ideas, and which will let us talk a little bit more about Bill Waterston's work. Uh, I'm going to read uh, the chat real quick. John says, oh, wow, that makes so much sense as to why it took clamps so long to get things out. I recall a lot of American fans getting mad about how slow Clamp was to get new stuff out. Um, yeah, it, it's um, so Clamp was originally founded by um, four women. Then one, then it, for the most part, it was three women, and then they would hire other people, specifically women. They would hire other women just to work with them if they needed help to do a lot of art. But it was mostly just a group, and that wasn't too common in Japan. Like, if you look at the artist who created, like, Inuyasha, she's just the sweetest little old grandma. Yeah, yeah. She's so adorable. It's just, and it's usually one artist who's doing everything. Um, like Araki, who we talk about a lot with JoJo's, it's just him. Oh yeah, he doesn't yeah. have anybody else doing anything else for he, him. He has like people like in his studio, his aides, but they just like move papers around for him. Like, okay, put this mat down now, put the stencil down now, and I'll do more. They, like swap out my airbrush stuff for me. Like that's it. Yeah. That's all they do to aid him. Um, and, but I mean, Araki's a pretty big name now. But oh, yeah. you know, like a lot of um, other artists. Uh, mangaka artists um they they do everything and it's usually just one single person and yeah it does take some time um but that's why all of these different publishers they'll cycle through they'll have those big giant like few inch uh thick um samplers of different manga and so like when somebody's got a new one up they would um they would switch it out and um, um, we'll bring in another one. And it's like, hey, if this one's doing really well, hey, we want this. And they've got their own contracts, of course. But um, Clamp, um, it was kept going back and forth. And they had a lot of, like, 
like in the 90s holy shit they were producing so fast because they were working as a team and it was just the three like it was just mostly those three women uh, was mostly just that small group and that's how they were able to produce as much as they did and they did produce a lot yeah um so they, it took a while for things to come stateside because they didn't want to take risks on like um clamp and wonderland you know um yeah. Magic Knights Ray Earth did well. Um, they had a bunch of other titles. They had so many titles that they didn't even finish. <laughs> like, they have one called X. Um, oh, God. Uh, 1999. <laughs> yeah. You've, you've shown me a little bit of that. Oh, of that it's, and it's, it's wild. It's weird. I love it. it it's... It was, I love those mangas because it was just like so boom, bold, just the letter X. Yeah. I wish that, that's what Elon wishes his <laughs> X was. Um, Suck it. Yeah, it was cool. Maybe he was a big fan of X and that's why he's, he, oh, he likes it. Maybe, Who knows? Maybe, maybe we have got a common interest. <laughs> but um, no, they, they it, was, it was just taking things to come stateside. And there were a lot of things that they were being um, um, censored in the United States. Um, nudity, sex, um, blood, and violence. Yeah. Oh my god, Clamp's early shit. People were being beheaded. There was gore. Metal. X was so gory. They they would not bring X to the United States for the longest time because it was too graphic. Meanwhile, I bought it at Kino Kuniya anyways. But, like, for them, for any American publisher to do it, a lot of them didn't. And it was, like, Viz um, Entertainment. There was only a few who were willing to publish those mangas. They never did any floppies or the big ones, of course not, because that was just what was popular in Japan. But, like, the the um, the full mangas themselves, um, it's, um, like, they had their own schedules. Like, yeah, they do have some schedules with their publishers, but at the end of the day, they're like, what are you going to do? I'm not going to do it. You can't force me. <laughs> and so the, the artists have a lot more control over the content, over what they they do. I mean, of course, what happens is is that their publishers are usually like, well, don't you think you should? And sometimes there can be some conflict between um, the artists and the publishers. Um, but um, compared to the United States, it's very, very different. And they have a lot more control. And because their artists are given a lot more control and they're giving a more of a platform to be able to be published very easily, uh, that's why you get so much variety. So you get a lot of weirder stories like Boku no Academia, uh, or My Hero Academia. Um, Which is so funny because that is very much inspired by U.S. Uh, like superheroes. Like that guy is like a weeb for U.S. Uh, superheroes. Yeah, it's... Um, and because you have like a guy with like fucking tape for elbows, yeah. like that shit's so fucking bonkers as well. Kind of like what we're talking about with Heathcliff, but like <laughs> you know, it's because they're given a lot more freedom for these artists to tell sorts of their their own stories, and they're not being censored as much by their publishers. Now, of course, I'm oh obviously generalizing. There are some issues. I know that. The guy who did Evangelion Neon Genesis was heavily, like, pushed one way or the other, and he wasn't allowed to do a lot of the things he wanted to do. Uh, the guy who did One Punch Man couldn't get a publisher uh, because his art wasn't too great. And so he did everything online, but that got the attention yeah. of... Um, of publishers and other artists who were like, you know, we'll do your story for you because we love your story so much. Um... So, funny story about what Ken's <laughs> doing. funny story behind this, yeah, actually. Yeah. So, so, um, the, uh, uh, the, the P and Calvin, actually, we learned recently, wasn't done by Will Waterston. Uh, he actually had nothing to do with it and tried to prevent it from getting out. Um, it turned out, like, God, what was it, like, 98 was the earliest that it, it showed up? Uh, it was just... I think it came from, like, one of the Chans, uh, quite frankly. Um, but it just kind of built its own uh, momentum, and people really fell in love with the, the P and Calvin thing. That um, he, he tried to shut it down. Police would arrest um, people who were making this stuff. Because it was all a lot of, like, fly-by-night production that made the, um, the P and Calvin stuff. Um, so they... Um, he, he fought tooth and nail against it, but just because it was so 
widespread and you just didn't couldn't get any kind of uh, hold on the people who were producing it and there's more than likely multiple people producing this stuff uh, Waterston couldn't get a hold of the peop- anybody you know long term who was making it so uh, which he one of the regrets that he stated is that he didn't do more licensing merchandise for his his stuff but he just didn't want to do that uh, that wasn't his interest was to to do a Jim Davis and have Calvin and Hobbes merch every which way, um, which is part of the reason why there was so many copycats with the P and Calvin. Like he never made it. He never drew it. It was just some asshole took um, existing art from it and just kind of manipulated some Calvin doodles to um, create P and Calvin. Yeah. yeah. um, The original, I love, okay, I love this sassy (laughs) one you've done because I love that he's just a a fluffy cat. Yeah. And cats don't lift their legs like that. No, they don't. But I mean, I had to make it work. No, no, no. It's very, very cute the way you've done this for for a cat pissing. But, um, um, I'm sorry, can you say that one more time? A cat pissing. <laughs> the, 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 what about a cat pissing? It was cute. The, the string it together? I forget what I said. <laughs> <laughs> you just don't want the audio clip out No, there. I don't care. <laughs> I don't remember what I said. I said you, it so fast. You don't want people to be like, oh, this, this, for a cat pissing, this is very cute. Okay. Yeah, no, no, no. Can't have that like be a, a, a clear pissing, audio that people cute. can yeah, yeah. do funny stuff with. Um... <laughs> Nailed it. Did it. Um, <coughs> yeah, weren't some people arrested for yes. having the, that the pissing Calvin um, uh, bumper sticker? I think it was mostly, like, down south. Like, I want to say, like, between Alabama and Florida, if that They were really right. trying to stop it, yeah. but then it just got out of hand. Uh, mm-hmm. Chan says in the comments that um, I've see, he's seen so many of those uh, yeah. car stickers. Oh, yeah. It just, it's it, weird yeah. that it still exists. It got it's to the still... point where Waterston just... It, there's just not enough hours in the day to crack down on it anymore. Yeah. So, have yeah. we done number? What numbers have we not done? We have got two, four, and nine. Let's start with two. Oh God, thank you. Okay. Okay. And, and, and we got fifteen minutes, so let's see if we this, we've got. This might be a time eater because it's going to be Prince Valiant. Yay! <laughs> this is one that I wanted gonna try and go like renaissance Hieronymus Bosch for you. Yeah! Uh, that should be a big clue on, as to what I'm doing if I'm referencing Hieronymus Bosch. Um, <laughs> Prince Valiant, that's another one that I read. I didn't get it most of the time. Yeah. And because it was telling this ongoing story and I was like, I I don't even know where to start because it started long before I was born and I oh, tried God, yeah. to read it and I was just like I like the art. I'll enjoy the art. I'll enjoy looking at it. That's cool. Moving on. The, the, but I, Prince Valiant was one I re- uh, requested for this one just because I thought, like, God, like, that is, like, here you had the cartoony, like, Calvin and Hobbes that everyone loves and, like, uh, uh, Snoopy and, like, uh, uh, Family Matters and all these, like, oh, Kathy, like, the very cartoony. Family circus, yeah. And, and then you fucking have... Prince Valiant <laughs> with the most realistic. It, it was just. Mm-hmm. It was always so weird oh, yeah. and out of yeah. out of just like out of left field, and that's why I loved it. It was so bizarre. And like like um, uh, Flash Gordon was the one that was in my local syndication. Mm. Was uh, I, I read a lot of Flash Gordon as a kid because uh, yeah. yeah, fantasy versus sci-fi. Heck yeah. So um, we got John Bird uh, one. Oh God, I'm sorry, John. I got stuck on my clamp rant. That back in the one where we had the birds. Bird one. Do you think Ken is going to put the garbage ape? Oh well, we need, now we need this one to have a garbage okay. ape. Okay. Okay. Like so, a very realistic garbage ape. If if I'm gonna do like um, uh, try to make this feel very renaissancey, then uh, yes, I, I know what I can do for garbage ape on this one. Okay. Okay. Um, Chance, Clamp in Wonderland is where Jotaro X Kakoin Love Child Love Child came from. What? <laughs> I gotta look this up. I think you might have told this to me before, uh, Chance. And then Chance also has the same thoughts on Prin- Prince Valiant. I think you told me that before about Clamp in Wonderland, and now I want to look it up because I I was so huge into Clamp. Um, 
when I was a young warthog. I still like clamp. Um, a clamp, I believe, is still together. They just don't make very much stuff anymore. Um, they still, like, try to go back and, like, they'll do little projects here. They got really... I forget the name of the anime and the manga that they did um, right after Card Capture Sakura. But it was, like, the same characters, but it's, like, kind of an alternate universe. Hmm. Um, and um, I'm forgetting the name of it. And then I did XX Holic, I believe. Which is just very different. I've heard that name. I've never watched yeah. it, but I, I've, I've heard of it. The, um, um, and so it's been a while. Like, those were, like, kind of, like, early 2000s, mid-2000s, yeah. I think, of the latest. So I, they might be taking a bit of a break, which, again, it's good to take breaks. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It always is. Um, chances. I've mentioned the Jotaro kept going baby several times. Uh, you'll start to notice a lot of their male couples are just AU, Jotaro, and kept going. You know, I, I want to look it up now. Well, okay. So, like, the two, uh, like, the brother and his, uh, his boyfriend, uh, from Card Capture Sakura, um, maybe? It looks a little bit different, but, like, I, I love those characters. They're so cute. Uh, oh, clamp. But yeah, like, um, <laughs> sorry, I just saw a Ken's drawing. <laughs> Trying to do like, like a very regal, uh, garbage ape. Yes. With, with everyone his, loves the garbage I, ape. Everyone loves the garbage ape. The thing things our dreams are made of. The garbage ape. The garbage <laughs> ape. Oh, oh man. God. Yeah, so uh, thank you all for staying with me with my crazy manga rant. Um, well, no, it's just, it, you know, people yeah. have been... Tr it's it's a, been a conversation that's been happening recently because a lot of people are saying manga has won the comic wars. Like, they've won. Yeah. They figured it out. And, and, and they're trying... They're giving it all the wrong credit. And I'm like, it really comes down to the publishers. It's something that's completely overlooked. And, and again, we talk about, like, where people were getting published because... You know, it wasn't that long ago where that's where people would get found. It didn't even necessarily have to be good at art, like the girl who did Kathy. Um, like, or even like Inuyasha. I mean, she's sweet. But like her art... So actually, you know what? I, I take that back. Her art is actually really incredible. Like, if you look at the backgrounds and you look at the other things, she can draw really amazingly. She just loves drawing the same dumb anime face. Yeah, she, 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 she figured it, out the perfect face, like, decades ago and just won't give up. Yeah, that's the, her favorite face that she loves to draw, and that is she she is just the sweetest grandma. But I do, <sighs> she is a, actually a really great artist. And, yeah. and again, a lot of these artists, too, will draw all of their own backgrounds while when you see a lot of, like, the whole process in the United States, especially for Marvel and DC, how like one person will come in and just do basic sketches. Another person will come in and like do the backgrounds and some people will just specialize just drawing Superman because that's what they do. Like you have so many fucking hands in the whole process of creating it and um, drawing it and writing it that like uh, they become so expensive and with well, those little floppies, um, Ken and I were talking about it, too, that, um, you know, like, you were saying how no one was really going to buy Doonesbury, like, older issues of yeah. Doonesbury. It was very much of its time in its moment. Same thing with Kathy. You know, I know I'm giving Kathy a lot of shit. But, like, again, it, it was just, it was of its time, and, like, it, it, the equivalent is now, like, you have similar types of comics, but you have, like, um, oh, uh, Sarah Scribbles. Mm. And um, why am I forgetting his name? Uh, um, Adam Ellis. Oh yeah, yeah. You have those types of artists who are basically doing the same kind of idea of like a very simple short comic format that it's very relatable, like to our day to day lives. But like it's on social media, it's not on, yeah. it, it, and you have to follow them. You're not. It's not going to just be given to you in the newspaper that you read. Oh my god, you moved your hand and... And you saw? <laughs> you saw, saw what I was doing with the, the garbage ape? <laughs> oh my god! Because, gosh. like, just trying to go for that Renaissance vibe of, like, Prince Valiant and, like, how Renaissance artists did not know how to draw animal faces. They just drew people faces, and I adore them for it. Oh my it. god, this is beautiful. Uh, John says, uh, Rumiko Takahashi is my jam. I don't know who that is. Mermaid Saga was my favorites. I don't know those. 
I'll have to go check them out. I actually, I, I know I talk a lot about when I was a young warthog and I was really into it. I was, like, and then I, in my college days, I was like, oh, I'm kind of embarrassed that I was so into anime. And so I kind of, like, I wanted to be cool. And I feel like the this art, art teacher that I talked about uh, kind of ruined that for me, too, because she was really shaming me for liking anime and liking manga. And so I wanted to be, like, a cool and adult and so I kind of stepped back. So I've actually, I haven't been as in, like, I'd love to get to uh, Kino Quinia again sometime soon, just so I can, like, kind of catch up, <laughs> you know, like, see what's, what's being yeah. published and what's going on, because I'd love to get back into it. Uh, there's a lot of anime that I haven't watched, too, just because I've been kind of out of the loop for a while. Um, oh, Rumiko made Rama one half, and Inuyasha. Oh! That's her name. Okay, thank you. Uh, Rumiko is so cute. Like, again, really incredible artist. Thank you for the context. I'm at, And again, I'm also really terrible with names. It's true. <laughs> I'm really bad at names. It's very true. Um, thank you. Thank you for letting me know. Yeah. She, yeah. Um, what was the other one she did with the, the, the yellow bikini? It was like a... Oh, um, like Lum? Like, is the yeah. character's name? Yeah. She's a, she's a little... She's um, like an alien girl. Oh, uh, she's an Oni. That's Ooh, why she got the little horns gotcha. right. and the little, like, the striped outfits that was traditional for, mm -hmm. like, Oni to wear. Um, yeah, she's a little Oni girl. And she was super cute, too. But she does the same face. After yeah. all these years, it's still the same face. And I think it's very charming. Like, for a while when I was younger, I was like, eh, she's so bad at art. And then I'm like, oh, right, except she's drawing everything else in this, too. She just really loves drawing that sweet, adorable face. Mm -hmm. I love her. Um... um the I haven't heard of Mermaid Saga though. If it was done by Rumiko, I have to check that out too. Because I, I I'm only aware of the uh, the ones that she's like her most I iconic ones like Ranma one half. Um, yeah. Oh memories. Oh memories. I'd love to get to to Kino Quinia again sometime soon. Yeah. Just so I can show you those giant uh, manga. I would love to go. This, it was those are so cool. Those are so so cool, and they're still a thing. Like you know, like nowadays in like things are so different here. Like again, you don't really buy comic books in comic uh, book shops. Um, like you go to Barnes and Noble. And, like, I don't know, like, there's a couple of uh, comic shops that exist in our local neighborhood. But nowadays, everything's done digitally. And yeah. you can get things to sent to you. It's it's just very, very different. And uh, publishers love things going digital because they don't have to pay for it, like, the physical copies. Meanwhile, in Japan, they're doing just fine doing the physical stuff. There's not a lot of, like, like there's some people who do things online. Um um they're usually just independent people who are doing more things because it's easy to publish uh, self-publish yeah. online like again the guy who did um one punch man um but then again if they're popular enough like publishers will take risks on smaller independent artists because they know that if they just let people go and just have that freedom for their creativity you get a better product they pay a lot their artists yeah. a lot better too there's so many like when you talk about professional like comic book artists here in the United States versus the number of professional mangaka artists, there are so many more in Japan and they're doing it as a full-time career and yeah. they're thriving. They have houses in yeah. Japan. Yeah. yeah. They have houses. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> they're doing really good. American comic artists have to have a GoFundMe to pay for their insul uh, uh, insulin. Yeah. 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 It's just, it's, it's, and again, like, quality of life, being able to pay your artists better, um, letting them have more creativity, uh, I think those are the biggest ones. I love that you did put the garbage can in there, and, like, the, the frock collar. Yeah. Oh, my God. They're, like, just, oh, oh, my gosh. Um, got, um, Urusei Yatsuru, yes, that's it, thank you. Um, Urusei Yatsura, that's right, I want to mess that up i do speak japanese i promise everybody um yes i do have my phone in my hand but i'm looking at the chat <laughs> and so i don't want to like stop and look things <laughs> up but that one's really cute yeah it's a little the little uh oni girl she's dude that one was really cute i think it was a pretty short one though um we got a chance multiple animes about it though God, I would love to see those old animes because I think I think they just revamped one. I I really? know they're. I'm pretty sure they're on Tubi. What? I think that was one that we came across. Oh but my god! We were very head empty as we were scrolling through Tubi. Oh, well, that we first had COVID. Time. Yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> we we um, had tickets to the Backstreet Boys. We got a chance saying, uh, Leaf and I uh, went to one of the Barnes and Nobles in Tacoma, and I was wowed by the manga selection. It was huge. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and... Um, <laughs> really hard for i was i was going more much more like renaissance style than prince valiant i admit that but you know, you know what a very human faced cat that, that feels very iraqi so we're bringing it back to the start with the jojos yeah yeah oh god because it's hard and hard he still is that bad boy <laughs> heathcliff well we we've only got four minutes left we did start a little bit late did you want to do one of those last ones uh, quickly or I, do you want to show people everyone that you've already drawn and we everyone picks their favorites? I just kind of want to throw in a little a little cherubim frog because um, they've like, like Peter Gallagher has really been doing a lot of like fun little other characters like uh, frogs and, and skunks and stuff and I just want to showcase a couple of these more like just, just really make this feel like like an old uh, Renaissance piece. I think that this is the ultimate tribute for Heathcliff's 50th birthday. Absolutely. You know, like, people get, like, those fancy paintings done of their cats. Yes. Like, this this is the equivalent of that with the garbage ape and, and, and Heathcliff um, and all yeah. of the things. I, yes, I think this is the best way to last for those last few minutes. Just, just give, making this the <laughs> ultimate gift for Heathcliff. Chan says this Heathcliff has seen things. <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah, but again, Aww. we cannot recommend like a modern day Heathcliff mm -hmm. enough. I adore you can it. find him um, on all the social medias. Yeah. Give him a like, give him a follow, Let's give him a happy birthday tomorrow. Tomorrow is the official birthday. Yep. That's when he officially turns 50. I'm September curious if third. he's going to do anything. I hope so. I like, hope I'm, so too. I'm going to try and keep an eye out. Yeah, of yeah. Of course, I mean, if he's New Jersey, like he, his time zone, like. It's it's already the third. We could go on there and wish him a happy birthday. For, yeah, for yeah. Hey, Rachel, thanks for joining Whoa. us. Rachel Garfield is better. Better. <gasps> I mean, everyone's got their favorites. That's true. It's, it's I okay it. to have preferences. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, um, Garfield is Garfield comics still a thing? Is he still making? I'm Garfield pretty sure comics? Jim Davis is still making comics. Yeah. God. Yeah. I just love all of the crazy chaos with Garfield. Mm -hmm. Like the the um, what is it? It's the one where they just remove John. Yeah, Garfield minus Garfield. Yeah, it, it's outstanding. Um, I have a soft spot for Heathcliff. Um, I mean, he's the original OG Orange Cat. Uh, he is. Garfield came seconds. Yep. So you Heathcliff know, Heathcliff is five years older. He is. And and he's he's fifty years young. Oh my God, that means Gar Garfield's forty five. Garfield is forty five. Oh my goodness, mm -hmm. man! I wonder if Jim Davis is gonna do anything special for his fiftieth birthday. <laughs> Hopefully, retire. <laughs> my God, please take a break. Maybe. Oh, God! I think it would be so hard to draw the same style for fifty years. I mean, it's definitely like. It's definitely changed. It changed yes. and adjusted just because he, he did draw it so much, too. Like, exactly that. But, like, now that he's... It's been in the same style since, like, the 80s. He's Yeah, he really kind of honed in on it um, uh, in the 80s, for sure. So, like, God, that's 40 years of the same draw. Mm -hmm. I mean... <laughs> Same comment. Yeah. Like drawing yeah. the same exact thing for the like the last forty years. Yeah. How hard that would be. Yeah, for sure. Oh God, please, please, please retire, Jim Davis. <laughs> like we love you. Just, just, just take a break, man. Oh yeah. man, because I, 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 I definitely, I feel that. Um, um, we said his name. Who did um Far Side? Oh, um, um. Gary Larson. Gary Larson. Yeah. I think he made the right call by oh, yeah. ending it. And, I mean, he still makes lots of money off of, like, the calendars. Oh, for sure. The, 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 the books. I mean, people reread those ones for sure. They oh, don't yeah. necessarily reread Doonesbury or Kathy. Yeah. But they'll definitely reread Farscape. And, and... <laughs> do I, keep, I keep, keep saying it. Farscape. Ah! Mercury Gatorade! Ah! It's all good. It's um, cute. Rachel says Heathcliff was a copy of Tom and a few others. 
What's um, Tom and a few others? Oh gosh, I'm. I mean, I like, guess like there's Tom Cow, like Tom and Jerry. I, 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 maybe. Yeah, I, I'm not I sure. Know. I mean, yeah, like I'm. I'm pretty sure Heathcliff is not the first cartoon cat by any means, but you know. That's Felix. He's Felix the cat did come first, absolutely. Yeah. Um, but I, I think that really speaks to just our love of cats in this society too. So yeah. Like this, this is a gift. This mm -hmm. is beautiful art. Can I love the, all the animals? Those are exactly what those animals look like in Heathcliff, too. I decided since I'm trying to go like more uh, Renaissance, I made the skunk a monk. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> 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 this is the so, gift. This is nice the gift that. Drapery. Yeah, yeah. Let Peter Gallagher know we love him, please. Yeah. That, that would make our day. Yeah. Um. Yeah, yeah. So it's his birthday, uh, technically yeah. on the East Coast, where he's at. Uh, definitely give them a like, give them a follow. He's so awesome. Yeah. Hope you all had fun watching our stream. We stream here on YouTube every Saturday night, um, 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, we've got lots of videos up in all of we our do. live section. We only have one in our video section. <laughs> We're going to uh, change that. We, we'll, 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 we'll get there. We'll get we, there. We like doing live videos, too. So It's, it's sometimes just easier just to go live. No, oh, absolutely. Um, but it's, uh, we've got lots and lots of other videos from past streams. Um, where we've played around with different styles, like in this. Um, definitely love the Kirby stream that we've done. Um, we're always open for more ideas about different streams, even if they are cursed. <laughs> John. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, you can message us. Um, all of our social media things are on um, our page, where you can follow us on Instagram, all the social medias. Um, uh, Ken's on Blue Sky. I, I am Ken German Art on Blue Sky. Uh, I am on Threads. Ken's also on Threads. Um, yeah, all the stuff is on the social medias. Uh, feel free to leave us uh, comments. Um, hit the smash, that like, and the bell so you get notified when we go live. Uh, sometimes, like today, we're a little behind schedule, but if you if you hit that bell, if you subscribe, You'll then you will know. be notified. Then when <laughs> John's, I'm not sorry. I know you're not. Yeah. <laughs> but thank you all so much for watching. It is always uh, fun and just to share <laughs> silly stories. Oh my god, the robot! I, um, I didn't do anything with the man-eating giants. Oh I'm my god, you didn't! Oh. We were talking them up. Yeah. Okay, well, okay. y'all have to More go see. More reason for you to check them out. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Real quick before we sign off, mm -hmm. Ken, who is your favorite tonight? <sighs> Who was my favorite? You're going to make me choose a favorite child. Pick a favorite child. Um, Mine was the um, uh, Hagar. Hagar? Yeah, Hagar yeah, was pretty Hagar solid. was really good. I did enjoy that. You know, I... Hmm, yeah, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say the first one was the best. Well, doing the, doing JoJo's. the JoJo's. Yeah, yeah that was JoJo good too. Heathcliff, yeah. That was really good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well... Thank you all so much for watching. Um, we'd love to know which one was your favorite, too. Yeah. Um, leave us a comment. Let us know which one you thought was your favorite. But as always, thank you so yeah. much for watching. And uh, hope to see you all next week. We will catch you later. Same Heathcliff channel, same Heathcliff time. I, yes, this is our Heathcliff uh, yeah. announcement. We will become a Heathcliff <laughs> stream.